were foam muted. Finally, mute your microphone. Hi guys. Come, you are on mute. Hey guys, we're going to get underway in just a moment, so make sure you have your microphones muted. And in just a moment, we're going to get underway. Welcome everyone, by the way. Good to see all the little faces popping up. We're just giving people another chance to join, come into the virtual room. It's good to see you all again. This is going to be exciting. There's one of our all-time favorites. Tommy is in the house. He's got his cap on, his glasses. You know he means business. <laughs> so we're just going to give it another moment or so and let more people come into the room and join before we start the official opening ceremony of the Let's Do It World Conference for 2021 from Munich in Germany. Guten Tag. This feels more like a nightclub with this music. This is normally me in a nightclub, dancing solo on my own, with a big space around me. No one comes near me. But that's okay. I know that Annalie and Heidi on WhatsApp, when they're happy, they'll give me the green light and we'll get this show on the road. We've got some great talkers, by the way, really great speakers and great presentations. Of course, as everyone is at home and they're in front of their computers, like me, I'm sure, you have your tea or your coffee. Very important. Look at that. Oh, and of course, a bit of banya, which is Irish for milk. We need a bit of milk. I know this is fascinating uh, viewing right now, my friends. There we go, not too much, not too little. So put your hand up if you want a tea or you want a coffee. Who wants a tea? Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll put the kettle on again and I'll, I'll send them all out to you. Uh, 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 uh. 
I can see that more people are joining all the time. So hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to get going in a few minutes. Just because it is the first one, normally we're going to try and start bang on time sharp. But because it's the first one, we know that people are just finding the Zoom links and they're just getting in. So we'll give them another minute or so. Wow, it's so cool when you look at the gallery view. So many beautiful people here across. Look at them all. Look at Alina in the forest. The red hair. It must be cold, Alina, there where you are. Look at Robert. Look at that hair. Look at that mustache. How do you get it like that? That's just an outstanding. Marsh is uh, in front of the president of Estonia. The president is just kneeling down behind them. Okay, I think we have a lot of people here. We're still waiting for the final go ahead. Holger, check your WhatsApp. Very important you check your WhatsApp. You could be you could get a very important message on WhatsApp. There's Augustina. Augustina, put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Woo! And the music just finished, just like that. Augustina just wrapped the whole thing up. Beautifully. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, I'm told that we are ready. Everybody, this is the official start of the opening ceremony. Let's give a big wave from everyone. Hello. Yes. First of all, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Let's Do It World Conference for 2021. Uh, it's a collaboration, people working together to bring this conference to, to make it all possible. We have the Let's Do It World team who are based in Estonia. We have Let's Do It Germany. We have Let's Do It Indonesia. Those three teams working together, collaborating to bring you this conference this year. Of course, it will be different than previous years. I'm not going to say why. We have decided at the start of this that we're not going to mention that terrible word that we've heard so much about. So let's try and ignore what's happening outside of this conference in the world and focus on all the positivity, all the great energy that's in this group, and just focus on having a good time and learning from each other. Many of you were at the conference last year in Tallinn, Estonia, and how much fun was that? It was on between the 23rd and the 26th of January. We had 260 participants last year, if you remember that. A lot of fun, a lot of laughter, some messing as well, a lot of messing, but that's all good. But it was fantastic. And of course, let's do it. Uh, the World Cleanup Day this year was a lot different than in previous years, but still huge numbers. I'm not going to give them to you now because Heidi is going to speak in a moment's time and she will be giving you some of those numbers, the remarkable numbers. But this year we have 1,200 people registered for this conference. That is amazing. 1,200 people registered, 87 speakers these are great speakers, 87 great speakers and 33 different sessions. So over the next three days, we are going to come together. It's all about learning from each other. It's all about sharing wisdom and information to make the team stronger and catching up, getting to know each other more because we have the party tonight as well. Don't forget that. And we have some surprises in the party. So is everyone in good form? Give me a little thumbs up if you're good. I'll pretend you're all shouting back. Yeah. Oh, it's great. If you see me looking down like this, I'm not ignoring you. I'm looking at all your beautiful faces here on a screen below me. So it's fantastic to see you from all over the world. So we've got some music coming up in a minute. We've got the beautiful lighting of the candle ceremony that we do every year at the conference. Heidi will do that shortly. But for the time being, we have some speakers who are going to open this party up, this uh, conference up officially. And we're starting off with a man who I go way back with because when I first got on board with the World Cleanup Day in 2018, I know I've told the story before, but we were doing the live TV show from Tallinn, Estonia, and there was a volunteer in the room of volunteers. There were people, students taking phone calls and all that. And there was one man sitting there 
and live on television, I went over to him and I said, oh, what are you doing? He said, I'm a volunteer. I'm doing this, that. And then I said, oh, great. And what do you do when you're not here? And he was the prime minister of Estonia. So embarrassing for me. I thought they would never let me back into the country. But last year he was there again and we had a good laugh because he's a great guy. He is currently a member of parliament in Estonia. He was the prime minister of Estonia between 2000 and 16 and 2021. And I think we have him now on the line to uh, give us a welcoming address. So can you please give us a virtual round of applause for Yuri Ratis? Yuri, if you're there, it's over to you. Yes, hello. Thank you. I remember also both uh, these years and uh, these, these both are very, very lovely moments from, from me. Thank you. But if I, if I could say some words uh, for the beginning, then I very appreciate that, um, of course, dear members of the World Cleanup Day Network, I'm really proud. I'm really about proud that the future of our, our home planet has brought us together again, like, like you said before. And what it means, this means that the marathon we started together four years ago to heal the world and make it healthier, cleaner, and of course, also the waste-free, successful continues. Numerous times I have witnessed how ambitious and devoted you have been in implementing the idea. Last year, I personally picked up cigarette butts but, and other trash at the beach area of our capital, Tallinn, with young basketball players and discussed activities in different countries. Every event has convinced me of how effective the World Cleanup Day is in making the participants rethink everyday activities. It is the key to success this marathon we run, together we run. Estonia experience says that achieving climate neutrality is only is only 20%, 20% dependent of the public sector. The rest is up to business and the basis of all changes are our daily habits. What we are, are doing today, what we did to yesterday and what we will do, what we will do tomorrow. To get forward, we should move from thought to actions, Estonia reach shows that the main obstacle to need change, it has a lot of us are environmentally aware, but doesn't act in an environmentally responsible way. Another fact is to consider, to consider most of us makes efforts once or a year, but does, doesn't act properly every day. We will finish the marathon successfully if we will stay together and follow our goal. This means that solutions must be found and implemented by, by everyone, politicians, entrepreneurs, science, and all other people. The code is simple. As I learned from my parents who devoted their entire working life to the environment and now teach to my four children. We do not inherit the hurt from our moms and dads, but we borrow, we borrow it from our daughters and sons. Dear co-thinkers, I thank all of you for contributing time and energy to a better future for all of us. I also will you productive conference and very, very strong health during this COVID pandemic. Thank you. There you go. And by the way, Mr. Rattus, are you in a sauna at the moment? No, no, I am not at the sauna in the moment. It but looks that's like... true. But that's true. The sauna is very, very popular in Estonia. <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw the wood panels in the background. I thought maybe you were just chilling out in a sauna. But Mr. Rattus, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have a very busy schedule and for your support from day one, because I know that every year you've been there supporting it and it means a great deal deal to the whole organization. So thank you very much. Round of applause thank for you. Mr. Thank Rattis, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we're going to keep on moving with our next speaker because we're going to talk to a member of the European Parliament. And I want to hand over now to Marion Walsman. Marion, it is over to you. 
Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen, it's my greatest pleasure to be here today. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to hold this opening note on the Let's Do It World Conference, a cause that is very close to my heart. As a mother, as a politician, as an engaged citizen, the future is my daily job, the future of our children, the future of the citizens, and of course, the future of our planet, the house we all share together. My job is to work every day on that and to lead by example on making sure that the future is a bright one. This can, however, not be possible without a clean planet. We need to find solutions to manage waste. We need to work on an action plan to fight climate change. We need to ensure a sustainable development and keep the world clean and healthy. This is why we are all here today, because we all want to do something about it. Especially you, the citizens, the spirit of the worldwide movement, the World Cleanup Day is a very inspiring movement that gives us hope. Millions of volunteers in 180 countries come together to clean up the planet. It's a success story. This model proves that together we can achieve as much more. World pollution is a challenge that all of us have to tackle. Today, I want to thank all of you for rising up to the occasion and taking action. I'm here today as representative of the European Parliament from the beautiful state of Thuringia and as a patroness of the World Cleanup Day in Germany. Thuringia, the so-called green heart of central Germany, is a historical state with a wonderful nature. The Thuringian forest is one of the most beloved destinations. As people who love and value nature, people of Thuringia welcomed this movement warmly. In the year 2020, more than 4,000 volunteers joined their forces to clean their hometowns. More than 100 initiatives were organized and more than 70 communes participated. This year, we reached more people. We built more awareness. My vision as a patroness of this movement in, journey, in Germany was very clear from the beginning. Everybody needed to be on board with this action. We got in touch with city mayors, with local authorities, with school directors, with teachers, with engaged companies. In my hometown, Erfurt, Together with the diving school Yellow Submarine, we cleaned the river Gera and managed in a short period to take out of the river a huge amount of trash and plastic. I'm positive that more people will join us next year in Erfurt and in all Thuringia. The world pollution is a global problem, but we can start by dealing with it locally. The governments, the local authorities, companies, universities, schools, youth, all can play their part. It is important as we all responsibility and contribute. Cleaning the planet is great, not polluting it is even better. Small changes in our lifestyles can make the biggest difference. Avoiding the use of single-use products and plastics buying less wasteful products, recycling properly. The fight is happening on a local level. As a member on the European Parliament, I would love to share with you how this fight looks on a larger, more complex European level. The main framework of this fight against climate is a well-known European Green Deal. You have probably all heard about the main goal, climate neutral by 2050. This will make us the world first ever climate neutral continent. It is an ambitious goal. The road is going to be long. The coasts are going to be high. Not acting is, however, not an option. What is happening, happening now in the European Parliament uh, first thing, uh, the ban of the single-use plastics by 2021. This means that EU bans single-use plastic 
cutlery, cotton bots, stoves, and stirrers. Second thing, EU member states will also have new recycling targets. The collection targets uh, for plastic bottles will have to be 90% achieved by 2029. Circular and economy is all about recycling. This will help reduce the plastic waste that currently pollutes our oceans and beaches and rivers. Third thing is the European Climate Pact. Just as the World Cleanup Day, the center of this pact are the citizens. We as European Parliament welcome the initiative of the Commission and underline again the need to involve citizens, civil society, local community and businesses. European citizens really care about the climate action. We as representatives take this very seriously. Surveys show that 93% of the European citizens see this as a serious problem. That is why it is important that the European Parliament deal with these worries about the future of our planet and the future of our citizens. The good news is that 90, 93% of Europeans have taken at least one action to tackle climate change. You are definitely part of those, those uh, 93%. In addition, I'm sure that for most of you in this room, it has been more than just one action. It has been more than one day in the year. For many of us, a clean planet is a daily choice. It is choosing to bring a bottle of water with us and not buying single-use plastic bottles. It is about deciding to separate our trash in a correct way. It is about respecting the beaches, the woods, the rivers, the parks, where we spend our free time with our loved ones. Lastly, I would like to thank the organizers and the volunteers. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for taking action and keep up the good work for those who are taking of joining. That is my call on everyone. Join the World Cleanup Movement. Chose to do something for the future of our planet now. Not acting is not a choice anymore. A clean world, it is up to all of us. We all can make the difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marion Walsman, member of the European Parliament. There we go. Round of applause. Thank you, Marion. Thank you so much for your time and for being involved. And I'm sorry about these cheesy sound effects. You're going to hear them, guys, throughout the next couple of days because we have to improvise and we have to make do with what we have. It's going to be fantastic. Now, we, of course, they are in a different country each year. We have been for the World Cleanup Day. It all started in Estonia. This year, it has been hosted live from Munich in Germany. So we are going to say a guten Tag to the mayor of Munich now, Dieter Rieter. Good German name. Dieter, if you're there, the floor is yours. Oh, Dieter is coming in by video message. That's right. At the moment, he is a cone, like you'll see in the street. This is on the digital Let's Do It World Conference 2021 teilnehmen. Wie so viele andere derzeit, kann auch diese Konferenz nur digital stattfinden. Aber sie findet statt. Und die Arbeit kann weitergehen. Auch digital können Kooperationen gestärkt und neu geknüpft werden. Können Aufklärungskampagnen entwickelt werden, Ideen ausgetauscht werden. Ideen für eine saubere und müllfreie Umwelt weltweit. Die Abfallsammelaktionen, in Bayern sagt man dazu Ramadama, was so viel heißt wie wir räumen miteinander auf. Diese Aktionen im Rahmen des World Cleanup Day 2020 waren in München ein voller Erfolg. Noch besser. Der Münchner Stadtrat hat sich auf meine Initiative hin dem Ziel verpflichtet, München zur Zero Waste City zu machen. Kein leichtes Unterfangen, wie Sie alle wissen. Aber höchste Zeit, es endlich anzugehen. Dazu entwickeln wir eine Circular Economy Strategie, um alle Ressourcen so lange wie möglich im Kreislauf zu halten. Mit dem Ziel, dass am besten gar kein Abfall mehr entsteht. 
Wir haben auch städtische Kampagnen gefahren, um die Münchnerinnen und Münchner für mehr Umweltschutz zu sensibilisieren. Letztlich braucht es aber eine gemeinsame Kraftanstrengung aller, von Politik, Verwaltung, Wirtschaft und der Gesellschaft insgesamt, damit unsere Vision einer Zero Waste City Wirklichkeit werden kann, muss es gelingen, Abfall im Alltag deutlich stärker zu reduzieren. Durch verantwortungsbewusstes Einkaufsverhalten, durch Optimierung von Produktion und Prozessen in der Wirtschaft. Auch deshalb ist diese Konferenz so wichtig. Ich freue mich auf neue Vorschläge und Ideen. Let's do it, World Conference 2021. Ich wünsche Ihnen allen einen interessanten Austausch und viel Erfolg für diese Konferenz. Herzliche Grüße, Ihr Dieter Reiter. Hey, thank you so much for that. That was Dieter Reiter, the mayor of Munich, who are the hosts of this year's conference. And uh, sticking with the hosts of this year's conference, we're now going to speak to a man who is the conference director and he's the president of Let's Do It Germany. He has been putting in a lot of work to get this all together. And of course, you know, with any conference, there are huge challenges, there are huge obstacles to get around when it's we're all meeting physically. But even over Zoom, there were so many technical challenges and logistics uh, through the system, but it's just uh, all the work has been paying off so far. So let's say hello and hand over now to Holger Holland. Hello, Holger. Hello, everybody. Hi. Yes, um, a welcome from Germany and a welcome from, yes, let's do it, Germany. I have the pleasure to welcome you as president of the German network, the host of the conference and operative project manager of this yeah, digital platform. Welcome everybody to the yeah, Let's Do It World Conference 2021. This time as a yeah, online conference, but I think yeah, we make a new milestone in our movement. Under the new challenging, yes, everybody knows, we have Corona and all the stuff. Um, the team decided really late last year in October 2020 um, to switch the physical conference who was planned in uh, Munich, Bavaria, uh, to a digital conference. The creation of a new online platform in less than eight weeks was a major challenge for the whole team. It was only possible, so thanks to many supporters around the world who worked together. Thanks especially a lot to the Estonian team, to the Indonesian team and to the German team. Together, all of us are looking forward to different uh, speakers, a lot of them, sessions and uh, especially the outcomes of this digital conference. Believing strongly in the network and the possible change that this community can initiate. If I started now to say thank you to this and this person and so, I would certainly forgot someone. That is the reason why I say thank you to all of them as one team. You can find all the supporters who made this conference possible, a lot of them, in the section of our website, in the section T. Please have a look and yes, say thank you also to these people. Not often you are able to start a conference by presenting the first results. It's a pleasure that I can share three records with you. First, it's the Yes, it's the first global digital conference, what we did in this movement and what, what we did together. We have much more than 1,000 registrations um, or people or participants have registered to this conference. And in the moment, uh, the registration is still running. Uh, yeah, it's on running, I guess, and it's growing really fast. I see it a little bit on the right panel. So the result was achieved uh, thanks to a core team, it was a joint venture between three nations. And so 
let's say thank you again to the Estonian team, to the Indonesian team and the German team. All together, it shows how strong our network and we as a community are. Let's start together. Let's do it now. And yeah, I pass the word over to our president, Heidi, and the opening ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear Holger. It was really fantastic speech. And I really like that you said so great words about the mutual collaboration between three nations. So welcome, let's do it world leaders. Welcome, let's do it world teams, honorable guests from uh, public sector, from governmental sector, from different organizations, other NGOs, and our friends. It's really important that we are working together because we need the work together. And I think something which is really mutual and why we all are here is our desire to change the world. We have to change the world uh, for being living in their really resilient, future resilient world, which we can inherit to our children and for the future. This is not just the words. I really just want to say that the biggest passion is that we have to work together. We are, we are talking a lot. There are a lot of conferences talking about the climate change and we have to make the work and we have to make the change in the world. But in reality, we have to work in really consistent way. And sometimes it means to work beyond our comfort zone. This is how simple it is to be really, really consistent in our work. Otherwise we cannot achieve anything. And I, I'm happy to serve all these leaders and teams around the world who are able to do exactly this work, working out of the comfort zones and doing so remarkable things in the world because they are doers. We need more doers in the world and we have to work Together in this way that there are a lot of different kinds of organizations making alliances, working together for the same aim. And this is important. Collaboration. Open your hearts and open your minds. Open the same way how the Let's Do It are doing. Be part of this conference and I really hope that we can make the change in the world happen. Please enjoy and welcome to the Let's Do It Well conference. And of course, really huge thank you for Let's Do It Germany for let's do it in, in Indonesia and Estonian headquarter. And all the leaders in the Stuart world who are making this conference. Thank you. Heidi, thank you so much as always for your beautiful words. And now to officially open and launch the ceremony as we have done the last few years, Heidi is going to light a candle and this candle will represent the energy that we all have, our spirits all coming together and it will burn throughout the next four days until the closing ceremony on Sunday. So I know in a moment now we are going to have Heidi there with the candle. So Heidi, I'll pass it back over to you. And here we are, which is our old tradition from all the Let's Do It Well conferences is this simple candle, which is demonstrating the light to the world and also showing the bath. And I hope it will be lightening and giving the warmth to our world to continue our journey for the waste-free world and resilient future. This track is called Move. And it's about losing something really precious as a result of not taking action. Yeah. Look me in the eye and say there's nothing there you can. I swear, right, I will dare. Must I fight every bone in my body every time you're near? I will not grab you and take you away. For how long can we stay with the long round? Everything that really sounds from both of our bodies. 
If it stays the same for too long, it will fade away. But I won't wait until the day comes. If you don't make my move, I lose you for forever. Ain't gonna wait until the day. If you don't make my move, I lose you for good. Take my hand. And say that you don't feel what I feel, 'cause I see from your eyes that you do, and that's not right. Even if it feels so, you're someone else's bride, and I can't let go. If it stays the same for too long, it will fade away. I won't wait until the day yeah, comes. If you don't make my move, I lose you for forever. Ain't gonna wait until the day. If you don't make my move, I lose you either way. Driven by the fear. If you don't make my move, I lose you for good. And I feel that we really belong together. Until the day I come, if it don't make my move, I lose you for forever. Ain't gonna wait until the day. If it don't make my move, I lose you either way. Driven by the fear. If it don't make my move, I lose you for good. And I feel that we really belong together. Thank you, and so happy to see so many of you here in the Zoom chat. Nob, thank you so much for that. That was really beautiful. And just uh, quickly, tell me a little bit more about the song. I know you mentioned it briefly. It's about, is it specifically about the environment? Is that what inspired you or what's the genesis behind the song? Uh, no, in that case, no. It's, it's, about, it's about love uh, for another person. Um, But recently, half of my tracks that I've written are simultaneously about that you can translate that they're about love and also uh, about, the, about the situation with the world. And it's so fitting for this because it's like the love we have for our planet and not wanting to lose that. And the quality over the Zoom was just, I'm listening to it here on speakers. It sounded really beautiful. And when I looked at the gallery, I saw every girl had their iPhone out pressed right up against it. And people were saying, love, love, love in the comments. So we appreciate your time, Nup. I know you're in demand. Uh, the last time I checked, you had over 50 million streams on Spotify and you're getting more recognition around the world and I know you've helped out and performed for World Cleanup Day before so we appreciate it. So big virtual round of applause for Nup everybody. Let's see those hands. You can't hear it Nup but there's ruptures applause I promise you. So, so thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you very much Nup. Okay that is it. That is, it marks the end of the opening ceremony. And now we are going straight into our first session. So now we are really underway, guys. This is the success stories. And this has always been one of the best parts of the conference. I, I know the last couple of years in Estonia, people really love hearing these success stories because they're just, they're really brilliant. And we get a good variety from around the world. But before we go into the first session, I have some house rules for everybody. And uh, they're just kind of simple things. That, and I know that I've mentioned some of these at the beginning, but I'm conscious that some people are just coming in late. So if you can keep your microphones muted, if possible, so that we can hear the speaker clearly. Turn on your cameras so we can see your beautiful faces. One of the great things about the World Cleanup Day and the Let's Do a Conference is that everyone's exceptionally beautiful. They're all good looking people, apart from me. I'm the odd one out. So we want to see your cameras on so we can really feel like we're together and with each other. Another thing to mention is that this is all being recorded. 
So if you ask a question after the success stories, if you want to participate, we are recording it and it is being live streamed uh, on social media and it could be published later on. So just bear that in mind. So that's it. This is the first session of the Let's Do It World Conference brought to you by Let's Do It World, Let's Do It Germany and Let's Do It Indonesia. We are now going to hear a number of people speak. I'm going to get them up on my screen here about major success stories in their countries or in their groups. Now, here's the thing. Each person has an allocated time to speak. Now, we know what it's like when we're together at a conference. If someone is running a little bit over, we can give them a nudge or we can look at them and say, you got to wrap this up. So because it's over Zoom, things are going to be a little bit different. So for the speakers, when you were talking and you have around a minute left, you will hear this sound. Can you hear that? It's like a, a bicycle bell or something. So you will hear that. And um, then when the time is up, if you're still going, you'll hear a bit of music playing like that. And that means it's time to wrap it up. But if you're going to be like Bill and Steve in the USA and you just keep on talking, you're going to hear something like that. I'm joking, but it's going to be great. So without further ado, I want to bring on our first speaker. We have just heard from her, but she is going to give us our first presentation about a success story. Heidi, it is back to you in Tallinn, Estonia. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, and let's go to the journey about the World Cleanup Day. And here it comes. So uh, what are the World Cleanup Day 2020 numbers and all the emotions? First, let me to say that Let's Do It World uh, have been started from Estonia in 2008 already. And by this time, we cleaned the country in just one day. It was this idea that we can, like we can do and we are able to clean up our country in just one day. The great success story of the Estonia started to roll around the world. And there were plenty of different kinds of countries who took a part and made their countries clean as well. But in 2015, we realized that actually this is not enough. We have to do something really drastic. So we come up with idea, let's clean the planet, but let's clean the planet in just one day. Since then, we established and worked to find all the leaders around the world who were able to find and build up the teams in order to change and work for the for their huge work cleanup day in their country as well. All these 150 country teams are Let's Do It World family. And this Let's Do It World family flagship campaign is a World Cleanup Day. By now we have been conducted three World Cleanup Days with all and more than with 50 millions of participants. So, yes, last year was really hard to many people in the world and also for many countries in the world. Um, and we were really surprised that even in these restrictions from the government and also with all this care and, and being really, really um, secured that we don't want to spread the disease anymore. We were really, really, really surprised that we have 11 million participants from 166 countries who took a part of this day. This 11 million is with reports from Let's Do It World country leaders, but we had plus also, for example, 4 million from Earth Day and other big organizations. So of course, it's really understandable. For 2020, we had to make only a foremost that we do individual cleanups. And we didn't could take this kind of huge global mobilizations as the World Cleanup Day and Let's Do It are really well known. But how to do the individual cleanup? We also made uh, four campaigns led by Let's Do It World uh, headquarters which were cigarette butts campaign because it is one of the most collected item during the work cleanup day. And we were really surprised how low is our awareness in the worldwide level that the cigarette butts are causing so huge harm to, to the world environment. 
Definitely Secret Bots campaign is something over what we are working as a main campaign for this year. So, and also we made a plastic bottle campaign for those countries where the plastic bottle and the big items are more visible and causing the more, more troubles in the world. We also made a trash blindness campaign, which is really relevant in order to change the people's understandings and to see and observe how we are living in the world. And our new baby digital cleanup, what we launched last year is something which is also really important to raise awareness among the citizens of, of, of their world. I also want to note that cigarette buds campaign and digital, digital cleanup campaign and all these topics will be really well um, talked and, and also led by the experts during this, work, during this conference. But also we are showing how to mobilize 5% of national, national, national uh, people in your country in order to make very huge cleanups. Just follow our program. So as you see, we are covering different kinds of parts of the world. We were on the mountains, on the rivers, even in the ocean to pick up different types of um, waste, also masks, also cigarette butts, uh, bottles, and many, many more. So we, with, regarding of the waste, we collected more than 43,000 tons of waste. And in average, it was reported by our countries that per participant, the amount what we collected were 3.9 kilograms. But also, it's not just about picking up the waste. It's really important also to raise the awareness uh, in communities. So we made a waste sorting and composted practical workshops during the World Cleanup Day. I want to mention here Indonesia and El Salvador teams. We also collected um, 12 million cigarette butts. And this is actually an amount which was really truly counted. But in reality, we don't know how much of cigarette butts were actually collected. We also deleted more than 71,000 gigabytes, which is corresponds to annual CO2 reduction in 26.5 tons. We made brand audits and waste segregation with break free from plastic. We can say that we are the biggest ever civic actions. We were in 166 countries with 11 million people, which is like 33 million volunteer hours who collected 43,000 tons in really hard conditions, plus 45 degrees in Kuwait or minus five in Canada. And furthermore, we had also 156 billion times in social media. Here you can see the top teams of 2020. By participants always, Indonesia have been the biggest team uh, by, by bringing so many volunteers out on the work lane and say. And we only can imagine the work behind of this kind of numbers. And it's all be because of the collaboration, the great model what Indonesia is, is working for. The big surprise for this year was Ethiopia. Ethiopia numbers and behind of Ethiopia numbers is United Nations Habitat Organization. And it is really remarkable that this kind of collaborations in worldwide level, and we can make this kind of drastic and really huge uh, um, people gatherings. Huge thank you for you. United States, 650,000. Last year, it was 1.5 million. And here are a lot of huge partners to working for the World Cleanup Day. Mexico, um, an organization have been several years in the street world and the huge and rapid growth through the collaborations with great partners and organization. The work behind of Mexico is remarkable. The reports what they have done is remarkable. It's, it's amazing movement. India, 582,000. Last year, it had been millions. And India made a really different types of, um, of activities during the World Cleanup Day. Philippines, also 250,000. It's remarkable, remarkable outcomes. China always have been coming out with really huge numbers, but of course, China is the biggest country in the world by population. And the work what they are doing is amazing. Italy, really huge growth in many years. And uh, we like to hear all this story about the Italy team, how they have been growing during the years. 
Ukraine. Fantastic work again. And we can say that Ukraine have been mobilizing many hundreds, thousands of people. Um, and it would be really interesting to hear out their stories as well. Kazakhstan, um, again, like a newcomer, really huge growth, especially in this year. Um, so thank you, huge thank you for all the Let's Do It World leaders. And if you look at the involvement um, per um, population, so you can see there are slightly different countries. Already we can see Latvia and Faroe Island and Estonia and Mauritius and Albania, Sautome Principe, Sweden, Cayman Islands. And of course, Ethiopia and Indonesia are already in here as well. Fantastic work because by population, it means that more people have been involved. The visibility in the country level is more bigger. And this is really important if we want to raise awareness and make the change happen. We are conducting also uh, surveys in Let's Do It World, especially after the work clean day. We want to see how this network have been doing, what are their input to in organizational development, how the work cleanup they have been done, and what are simply the things that we have to keep in our mind in order to have this healthy organization. So you can see from Let's Do It World survey, we had 98 countries who uh, answered, which is 70% from all our organization, which is really huge amount of feedbacks. And among them, group cleanups were made by 80%, individual cleanups, also big number, 60% awareness campaign and cleanup of the cigarette butts have been made by 47%, digital cleanup, 44 and also plastic puddle campaign, which is so relevant in so many countries, 36 and also others activities. For us, it's really important to make the change happen in the world. It's not just about the work cleanup day, but we have to work with really, really important partners. And if you talk about the partners, definitely the governments is one of them. So you can see how much of countries have been engaged their governments. Here you can see a prime minister of Belgium. You also see our former prime minister working on this, on, on picking up the cigarette butts and he have been made and been part of the Let's Do It World always. Also our honorable president of Estonia. So you see how much of involvement have been from countryside. It's like a 72% of municipalities or other public sectors, a lot of ministries, environmental ministry are really important to engage. Other ministry, prime minister in 6%, presidents in 6% and mayors. And I have to say that comparing to last year survey, this number have been growing really big. And this is really interesting for us as well to see how the Let's Do It World network leaders are thinking, how much they're actually creating an impact during the work cleanup day. So we can see that the number is quite good, but we know that during this COVID times, it was really hard to our network to see the impact of the work cleanup day. We cannot, we cannot come to out with really huge group cleanups, but we made this kind of community cleanups and there are a lot of individual cleanups. Um, but we do know that the number have been growing in Africa and has been growing according to this survey, but also in Asia and also in Latin America. So thank you all the leaders who have been part and, and bring their stories and, and feedbacks. And also, it's not just about the work cleanup, the, what kind of other activities our leaders are doing. According to 18, 98 countries' feedbacks, the educational programs have been made in schools in 64, waste sorting programs in community in 60, uh, 63 countries, and educational programs in business sectors in 44%. And this is really relevant that we are working with youth, and, and, and also working with communities because we are the really big community engagers. And the starts, the change will start with engagement. About the media and work cleanup day, here you can see how much we have been in different kind of uh, channels. Of course, the pub, their social media is the mainstream and main um, channel where we are launching our our news and our data, and we are visible through the work cleanup day, but also blogs and newspapers. 
but it had 156 billion reach in total. You can see also the biggest or, or this kind of influences in our network. We have to say that it has been Netherlands, United States and France, Japan, Germany, Indonesia, Estonia, Nigeria, Ukraine, and of course, a lot of other and all the 150 countries. We made also waste mapping, but we had so many different kind of activities during the work cleanup days and campaigns. Therefore, the waste mapping was also one of opportunities uh, to be part. And here we are working with our dear and long uh, term partner, which is Stretch Out. And the work cleanup day cannot be cannot be without a call and media center. And uh, at this time it was in Estonia. So it was 24 hours live broadcast. It was moderated by Paul Flynn, who is moderating current uh, conference. So we had 24,000 media mentions around the world during that 24 hours. More than 100 people volunteering on work cleanup day and, and on the call and media center. And we have 100 live and pre-recorded interviews and video stories. It was all 10 sessions with 45 minutes broadcast. And all it was supported by the Tallinn city government and also by Republic of Estonia. And fun fact as well, you know, the work cleanup day is not just the hard work. It's hard work as well, of course. But it's also fun, it's supposed to be fun because people are engaging and will be changing through the joy for the meaningful work together when they actually can share their understandings and their hearts and their common work together and have better uh, connection with themselves and, with their, and between themselves. Then the fun is really, really important. Um, so you can find definitely a friend during the work cleanup day, but you can find different kind of other things like money, bicycles, false trees, these or firearms. And um, we have been absolutely everywhere. We have been the longest street in, 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 in Tehran, in Iran, and picking up the cigarette butts and raise attention of the government in this way. And Dima will talk about it. Uh, we have been below the sea level, we have been in the oceans, we have been in the rivers, we have been on the mountains, we have been absolutely everywhere. And this is not enough. We have to do actually more. Therefore, we invite you to be part of the work cleanup day in next, next, uh, next, next uh, September, 18th of September 2021. Hopefully the world will be a mm, great place again and we don't have this kind of restrictions or COVID or pandemic whatsoever and we can continue our meaningful work for the world. Thank you so much for all our teams in Let's Do It World who actually are doing the Let's Do It World and work clean up say. Thank you so much. Hedy, thank you so much, Hedy, for that wonderful overview and uh, just the way you present it with the graphics and all that and the numbers it just really makes it seem so worthwhile all the work that everyone is putting in all over the world just incredible numbers and i remember doing that show from estonia this year it was a lot of fun and the we were so surprised by the numbers the people who watched the live broadcast i think it was nearly two million people tuned in to watch it around the world so that was really incredible uh, one more piece of housekeeping before we go on uh, to our next success story oh and by the way we can take one question for haiti so in a moment I will ask you to put up your hand if you have a question. Before that, I have to mention as well, if you're on social media and you're sharing photographs, we want you to send selfies of you with your laptop or your phone, wherever you're watching the conference today. Uh, post the selfie online and use the hashtag clean conference. Really simple. Hashtag clean conference or hashtag let's do it world. Use one of those hashtags and we can pick them up and we can put them on the main accounts. So let's see those great selfies. We want you to be creative and show how enthusiastic you are to be here watching the virtual digital conference. So now, before we go on to our next speakers, I'm looking at the gallery view here. I can't see everyone, but I can see a good portion. If someone has a question for Heidi, they would like to ask about the presentation, please raise your hand now and I will come to you. Now, who has a question? I know someone, people are like this and I don't know if they have a question or if they're just relaxing. 
And if we don't have a question, that's fine. We can move on. Now, I can only see some people. So if you have a question, unmute your microphone now and say, I'd like to ask a question. You have five seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. No questions for Haiti, which is a good sign because she described it and explained it so clearly. We are totally in the loop. Now, we're moving from Estonia, from Tallinn. We're going over to the United States of America, which has been in the news a lot recently. Yeah. And I can see my two friends are there. It's Bill and Steve, everybody. Yeah. Bill and Steve, hello. How are you? How are you doing? Greetings. How are you doing? First of all, I love the, the background. You've still got rock in there. Tell us, what's that behind you? The, those beautiful mountain ranges. Well, that, that's right behind us. That's called the two-dimensional mountains. <laughs> You climb them every day. Do you for exercise? Yeah, flat lakes right over. Flat lakes right behind. Oh, right. you can see it, right? Yeah. yeah, somewhere back there. You guys are getting more handsome every time I see you. How is life? Uh, we're doing well. And by the way, for Irish, you're starting to really lie more than the average one. You notice that? I'm starting to what more? Why? He didn't, he didn't say anything. Tell tell the non-truth. <laughs> we're not getting handsome. We're getting older and fatter. No, he's in, getting fatter. <laughs> in Ireland, we say uh, you're speaking Blarney. If you say you go on that. <laughs> you've been doing a, quite a good job of it. I, I can't uh, hold the show up. I could talk to you guys all day. <laughs> I <know. laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> we'll talk later. But you have your presentation. Don't yep. forget, you have seven minutes, guys. And if you go over it, you will hear this sound. When, no, when you have one minute to go, you'll hear this, okay? Bicycle. That, do you hear that little bell? That bicycle. That's a bicycle bell. Yeah, we and, have a timer on here, too. Okay. You know what we had? Actually, I had a different sound effect, but they wouldn't let me use it. It was this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they said you can't use it. Uh, you but if, Bill and Steve, if you do go way too far over, you'll hear this. We will. Okay, it's over to you guys, and the stage is yours. Take it away. Hi there. This is the Bill and Steve, Steve show, show, better known as the BS show. But anyways, hey, wait, if I was here, that'd be, or you weren't, yeah, it'd be only Steve or Bill or the SOB. But anyways, uh, our whole thing is wait, greetings from the United States, greetings from the United States, yes. from San, San Diego, where it's nice and warm. No, it isn't. It's cold out. It's like 50 degrees. No, well, it's, whatever. It's, the other 50 it's degrees. 17 degrees. But anyways, Celsius. Anyways, so our whole thing was we had to say, go outdoors, have fun and clean up. That was our whole project for this year. And the main thing is we had to pivot from our large right. people. Go ahead, Steve. You, you right. talk. You want to. Yeah, exactly. Bill normally likes to talk, but I let him blather on for a little bit. But uh, normally we uh, have been doing large organized cleanups with uh, partners, uh, both locally and uh, regionally and nationally. So uh, this year, because of the COVID uh, issues, issues. Uh, issues, issues, we needed to pivot. And uh, so we went to small and uh, local socially distanced cleanups. And singular. Right. Uh, so one of the things that we developed was something called the tailored cleanups, Bill. Which, well, you go ahead. You, you came up with the idea. Well, that, well that's true. That's true. Um, it, actually, that started out with a uh, educational institution that we worked with uh, regarding uh, Google. Yes. And anyways, he's going to go on. He's a salesman. He can't stop it. Exactly. And then we found that small companies wanted to do cleanups around their area, around their house, their parks. And we found that if, but they had a hard way of signing up for it and letting their people know that there's something going on. So we said, let's do tailored cleanups just for them. And you know what? It worked pretty well. Right. We had actually a large number of companies that wanted to have their employees do engagement but because of COVID, they didn't have any alternatives, really. Well, yeah, um, large companies with, but they're small little offices. Yeah, so, so everybody's working from 7,000 small little offices back in their, you know. 2D mountains, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Back in their 2D mountains out of their homes. So uh, we actually had a significant percentage of the uh, persons, uh, the people that were volunteering to clean up, uh, doing it that way through our tailored cleanup program, everything remotely and socially distanced which actually worked out pretty well. Um, we, when we first started this, we were really afraid that we were not going to get much going. Uh, we were going to go from 2 million from last year. We were hoping 100,000 because people were afraid to go well, outside. we're talking about 50,000. 50,000. <laughs> so we got over 650,000 and we were rather surprised with that. 
And that was people signing up on our on our page. But we also included something really important was the plogging. Right. So plogging, as everybody knows, is uh, jogging and picking, and picking up. up started by Eric in Sweden. Right. And so uh, we actually did a big push on that. Uh, we uh, did a video for it. Well, he um, did a video for it. Yeah, well, he did a video for it to uh, help promote it. Uh, so we had a big community of ploggers out there. Uh, the other one uh, in the United States is Trash Tag, and that was started by a uh, guy named Stephen Reinhold. Don't uh, go too far into it, but anyways, yes, it yeah, was, right. It was and taking pictures of what you saw and then before and after, up, yeah, before and after. And he did a video, and we got a lot of marketing with that on uh, social media, right? Which Steve and I are really bad at, right? You're not going to see any selfies coming out of Bill and Steve. <laughs> So um, in addition, we uh, added a uh, sign up process uh, within uh, our websites uh, for uh, worldcleanupday.us and uh, for National Cleanup Day. Right. And that sign up process worked really good. That was really important. We, we have uh, improvements to do on that, but that was one of the key things was both the sign up process for the individual companies that we tailor or people or people and municipalities. Um, big, big on that part. Right. Yeah. Municipalities Cities. were big. Uh, again, that was a tailored cleanup program that we did. And you have to understand what we figured out, people want to go do something, but they need to know where it is to go do it. And the United States is, you know, a small little country in the middle between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans there. And people just go, or I'm in Poughkeepsie, New York, where do I go clean up? Well, if they have a way of doing it, they can say, oh, I can go clean up here. And that was the magic is getting people connected to the places to go. Right. By the way, is that coffee or alcohol? It's a tea, so it's neither. <laughs> it's... <laughs> and, and then one thing that we did um, uh, last year on the plogging and the trash tag uh, was we did that relatively informally off of our websites. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we got some good media out of it. <laughs> but um, iced tea. For 2020, we're actually launching, uh, or for 2021, 21. yeah, yeah, right. Go, go forward, not backward. Uh, we're actually launching uh, formal websites for blogging and trash tag, uh, again, in conjunction with the founders. Right. Uh, and then one other note is that we did launch last year on, uh, let's see, what was that, September 18th That's last about, year? Yeah, right. we launched Cleanup News. So people can, from all over the world, can bring in uh, stories, uh, we have a lot of scientific uh, uh, papers that are on right. there. Anything that, that deals with cleanup news. I like the picture of Colin there stirring off into space. Right. So, you know, since we told Colin that we'd be brief. Yes, we've got a, a minute. We, we got like a minute. Um, yeah. Did you want to do any questions? Yeah. Did we have anything else to say, Bill? No. That'd be like a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, one of the most I... important things, before I forget, one yes. of the most things we have our battle cry for all of this is if you're not having fun you're doing it wrong remember that that's a very good motto if you're not having fun i had to turn off my camera there because you made me laugh so much i choked my tea <laughs> i went bright red so i was scrambling to turn off my camera and i know when you were talking everyone in the chat is saying you guys are great we love you guys so i'm sure someone has a question and um, i can't see all the cameras so here's how we'll do it if you have a question for Bill and Steve to give me a chance to not choke, unmute your camera now and tell us who you are and where you're from. So anyone would like to ask a question? Tommy here from Iceland. I Tommy from Iceland, over to you. Okay. I want to ask them this device that they showed us last year, this uh, with the, the, the plucking device and the phone on it, did that work or not? I want to yes. know about that. So it did work. Uh, they are still in development. Uh, that was called the Rubbish app, right? With, and, the, with the with the picker upper, right? With the picker upper. Um, you know, we don't uh, we're, we're um, uh, we don't care. I, mean, I shouldn't say care. no, no. We don't get behind any. We don't get behind any one product we or help everybody. company uh, on that. But um, uh, you know, what we want to do is have a good competition between all the organizations that are making the uh, and, and let apps people know and, there's things out there. Tools. Yeah, uh, but uh, yes, we did have good success with that. Right. All right. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, now we have time for another question. Does anyone in Haiti would like to ask a question? I think they had two hands up the last time and we missed it. So anyone from Haiti would like to ask a question? Five, four, 
Three. Yes, question for Heidi from yes. Kazakhstan. Uh, it was nice presentation, Heidi. Thank you very much. Colum, it was nice to see you, all the guys. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Okay, so the question is, uh, do you have any in the picture? I didn't see it. Total garbage collected in the world. You would like to see the slide again of the total garbage mm -hmm. collected in the world? Yes. It was 43,000 tons, but uh, yeah. I can no, separate. by country, I mean, by country. By country. Because, it's yes. about the reports. Okay. But we don't have this kind of, we will do it next time because, you know, this time it was really hard to make also work on the reports because of a lot of individual cleanups. Thank okay. you very much. You are doing it. Great, great idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And Bill and Steve, sorry, you kind of got hijacked there at the end. But I'll ask you finally, the final question for me, what are you looking forward to most about 2021? Beer, wine, <laughs> going outside. Yeah. <laughs> Without a mask on would be really nice. <laughs> Let's see what else. But actually, no, what we're, what we're looking for, we're hoping, and this is our real prayer in a way, is that our big groups can get together again and do big cleanups because they're so effective. And even though the we're, we did pretty well, it's like one quarter of what have, could have happened. Right, we we should be. Yeah, uh, don't say I'm that. I'm not gonna say it, but we should be we more than we were by quite a bit from two years ago. Yes, we'll see. We're, we'll we're see. aiming at uh, much larger numbers. Yep, we're hoping, yep. Bill and Steve, thank you so much. You're great, fantastic. <laughs> Out of applause, everybody. From the United States of America. Look at the people love them. Listen to that crowd. And I know we have a lot of fun and we joke, but behind it, what they are doing is incredible. And you can tell by talking to them, you can tell by listening to them that the most important thing, their heart is in it, which is amazing, which is really good. And now we are going over to uh, Iran. And this is a, a story. Stories from Iran have always captivated the crowds at the World Cleanup Day conference and the Let's Do It conference. So we're going to talk now to Nima Zar about engagement of cigarette butts, the campaign, and engaging the government in Iran. So Nima, it is over to you if you're ready. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to the people who have tried hard to organize this event and provided us with this opportunity for sharing experiences and learning from each other. Thank you, my friends in headquarters, let's see Germany and let's see Indonesia. Uh, well, uh, those uh, who have uh, had the same experience in the countries might admit that harder steps need to be taken in order to engage the government in social initiatives especially if it is about a big movement that is performed globally and is organized by a foreign NGO. However, I guess that uh, working with the government in my country, Iran, is much harder than any other places in the world. Actually, in addition to the economic crisis caused by heavy sanctions I, on my country, uh, as well as the problems with the corona pandemic restrictions, and although local NGOs get good supports from the government, we are facing a fundamental problem with foreign NGOs activities in Iran. Uh, since a few international NGOs have violated laws in Iran over the past years, there is not a good opinion amongst Iranian officials about contributing with foreign NGOs. So it's very hard to convince the government to permit such event and to support it especially when it, when it comes to their presence. In fact, if you, want to do, if you want to do that in a formal way, you need to do numerous correspondence with the related organizations. Too many documents must be presented, presented to explain the goals of the movement. And uh, you also should pass a lot of interviews to get the required permissions. Uh, so, no need to mention that sometimes it becomes a long journey that needs a lot of time, energy, and money that may eventually end up having no result. On top of that, if you are unable to provide sufficient documents to meet the criteria, and uh, if they refuse to give you the permissions, you have to immediately stop all your activities, and you won't have enough time and chance to bring it up again. So, knowing all this, 
uh, what was our strategy to involve the government in Iran? To be honest, in this case, the best strategy for us was to have no certain strategy. You know, in my opinion, uh, when you are facing a dynamic and uh, unpredictable situation, uh, sticking to a particular strategy is not a good idea as your maneuverability will be limited and uh, you cannot be agile enough uh, in responding to sudden issues. Considering this matter, every time we have been about to organize World Cup Day in Iran, we have asked all people in our network to approach anyone they know in the government body just a few days or uh, weeks before the date uh, to meet them in person, talk with them, explain our plan and goals to them, and, uh, and finally to uh, simulate their personal motivation and uh, seek uh, any sort of help that they can offer to us. This uh, strategy, I mean, uh, having no guidelines and allowing people to do things in their ways has worked very well for us so far. Uh, the last working up there in Iran uh, was a real success, in fact. Uh, in addition to all uh, volunteers from across the country who came out to clean up urban areas and, uh, and uh, outskirts from the waste, we had a great success in uh, drawing politicians' attention to our activity as well. Uh, some government officials, for example, members of the city council of Tehran, which is the capital city, and a metropolis with a population of about 10 million, joined us on that day to clean up the longest and a fascinating street in the Middle East, uh, Valias Avenue, which is about uh, 17 kilometers long and uh, drawn from the very north to the south of the city. Beside that, almost uh, all major news agencies covered this day and uh, even one of the most famous international news broadcasting companies, uh, BBC Persian, made an stream, a TV report about uh, our initiatives on that day. During this event, uh, the chairman of the Cultural uh, and Social Commission created a social challenge and uh, invited all Iranian politicians and officials to join the campaign and to participate in uh, following events in the upcoming months. Uh, you know, from this point of view, uh, I consider World Cup Day 2020 as a very successful event uh, as we succeeded to involve almost all segments of the society in this project. And uh, I believe that it will certainly have a profound impact on, on our community in the long term. And now uh, we can see that World Cup Day is becoming more and more famous in the society after that day. And uh, we are observing an increasing number of volunteers joining our cleanup events every time we go out for a cleanup activity. So, I hope you do agree with me that it has been a very successful strategy for us in Iran. And uh, thank you so much for your attention. And I hope you have enjoyed my story. Thank you. Nima, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. And I know people are going to have questions. We're going to go to them in just a moment. But uh, what do you, for yourself personally, because so much of this is about personal stories as well, Nima, when you have so many obstacles in Iran, and like you said at the beginning of your uh, presentation, more than most countries. So what keeps you motivated and keeps you pushing through to try and achieve the goals despite all the things that are, you're faced with? You know, I would say, you know, I, I, I have always had a very strong connection with the environment, rooting in my childhood when I had been uh, spending my summertime in nature, wandering in gardens and playing with animals, with farm animals. And uh, after that, I uh, pursued my studies in animal science, which is somehow related to environment and to the nature. So, uh, you know, I, I, I always, I have always uh, thought, with, thought with myself that I, I should do something for the society, for the world, not for myself. So uh, when I was in the university, at the university, I talked to some, uh, to some same-minded friends and established a, a, an NGO to fight against these issues. And after graduation, uh, we expanded our activities and made 
a connection with other NGOs all around the country. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, this national network uh, that we established to deal with these problems worked very well so far. But uh, in answering to your question about these problems with Iran, you know, uh, we are in a, we, we are, Iran actually is located, is a very problematic area in the world. Uh, we are surrounded with some the tourist uh, groups and because of this and because of the safety of the people, the, our government, our government is very, uh, careful and is very concerned about people's safety. They don't allow people to gather together in, in a big number. And also uh, they need to track everything. They need to control everything to uh, avoid some, you know, some problems in the country. Because of that, we had maybe more obstacles in Iran than other places in the world. And it's it's normal here, I think. Well, Nima, thank you so much for that. And I'm going to put it out to the floor. If anyone has a question, um, you could type it in the chat or unmute your microphone and say your name and where you're from in the next few seconds. Unmute your microphone, say your name and where you're from if you have a question for Nima in Iran. So we'll give it five, four, three, to would anyone like to qu ask a question i'm just conscious that some people are putting uh, maybe putting questions in the chat others i may not be able to see so do not put up your hand unmute your microphone and if not we will move on to our next speaker five four three two one nima in iran thank you so much round of applause thank everyone for welcome. nima thank you so much nima now we're moving on. We're going from Iran to Indonesia. And in Indonesia, we're going to be talking about sorting as the focus of World Cleanup Day. So sorting. And uh, Ran Itia Nerlita. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sure I didn't. But Ran Itia, it's over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Good afternoon. Selamat siang. And also good evening. Selamat malam from here. Uh, my name is Pranitya Nurlita. You can call me Lita. So I will little bit sharing about the success story of World Clean Up Day Indonesia. And of course, um, here I'm very uh, grateful because I can meet virtual with you all and as a represent World Clean Up Day Indonesia and of course here all the participants and then all the speakers are very awesome and yeah a uh, great thing to all Indonesia leaders around more than 40 leaders uh, joining this conference. So I will share the slide so yeah with a second so I will share the slide okay. So uh, during seven, yeah, I have only seven minutes to share about sorting waste as the focus of World Cleanup Day Indonesia. So before um, sharing, uh, this is a little bit background. So I'm joining World Cleanup Day since 2018. And I know the first thing that uh, the journey of World Cleanup Day since um, held in Indonesia. So uh, actually the slide is in Indonesia, but I will uh, make it more. Uh, translated in English, so I hope you can understand what what Work Clean Up Day Indonesia done before. So yeah, so uh, actually Work Clean Up Day Indonesia has been a success in 2020. I'm so grateful. We are so grateful because uh, that Heidi mentioned before, we involve around 4.2 million volunteers around Indonesia, and our campaign uh, is called Clean Up Asian and Waste Segregation. And we moved millions of people during the pandemic uh, to join these actions. So uh, this is the global achievement from us uh, that Heidi mentioned before that Indonesia is the first um, the country that, that uh, involved more than 4.2 million of volunteers. And after that, Ethiopia and then USA, India and Mexico. And then beside that also, um, we are uh, in the fourth rank uh, for our target around 5% the population in Indonesia. And actually this is um, our achievement. And before 
for that also i will tell you about the story behind uh start since last year since three years ago so uh we're clean up day started 2018 and we involved around 7.6 million volunteers and we handled more than eight uh 18 uh, million kilograms uh 18 uh, million kilograms and then on 2019 we involved more than around 9.5 million volunteers and also we involved and we handled around 15 million uh kilogram of waste and this year uh, even we stay in our home and we can involve more than 4.2 volunteers and we handled around 4 billion kilogram of waste and uh we are very uh grateful because we got many support from the government from bali and then in the central uh, java and then west java and some of the uh, governments so uh, this is our achievement uh, we held world healing update on september 21st 2020 and we involved around 236 uh, cities and regions and the community who joined uh, world healing update is around 3430 communities and we involved also 1353 schools and we also involved around 201 uh, company and the universities is around 176 universities and also we have a spot for a waste uh, segregations is around 438 um points or 38 points and then this is uh the province because in indonesia we have around 34 province and then this is top 5 the province that uh, have the highest uh colleges. the first one is in the west java And then this is top five province uh, who have uh, another volunteers, and also uh, top five province. Uh, sorry, uh, actually, uh, the sound is. Um, is it my voice is clear? Uh, maybe Murni, uh, can you uh, help me to unmute uh, to mute your voice? Um, second. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. So I will continue my presentations. Oh yeah, so this is top five province who have uh, uh, volunteers and also top five the province who have the big amount of the waste. Uh, the Central Java, uh, they handled around 2.3 million of waste. It's around 50% uh, percent total. And we said that also this is uh, the total amount of waste segregations because why? This is very unique if you know about the history World Clean Up Day since 2018 until 2020. Because 2018, we just uh, campaign and educate people to segregate the waste. And right now, during 2020, we are is more um, actions because uh, the campaign is um, waste segregations. And if you know from this graphics, is around 39% is an organic waste um and then around 27% is organic and then 26% is mixed waste and the 8% is re- residual waste and and from this we also ha- can uh, know about the percentage of the waste the organic is around 80% 18% and then the plastic is around 44% And then glass is around nine percent, and then uh, another ways uh, you can see from the graphics. Uh, if you can see this one, uh, actually the plastic is the highest uh, waste that we already segregate. So this is also uh, the focus from us that we should know, and then we should segregate uh, the waste, and after that, uh, the waste can uh, go to the recycling centers. And um, during this uh, situation also, I will share you about uh, some of our achievement because we support the government programs. The first one, Indonesia Bersih. And then the second one is Pilah Sampah Dari Rumah, or we call it Waste Segregation from the Home. And the waste segregation of the home is uh, from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. And Indonesia versus Bersih is from Ministry of Maritime and also Investigations. And then Bersatu Indonesia Bersih is the collaboration campaign from the governments. 
And besides that, also we are very grateful because two ministries um, support us us uh, that I mentioned before and we also got sporting videos uh, you can see in the right side the first one is, is from the ministries and then another one is from government some of the governor like um, the central Java and then uh, from West Java and then from South Kalimantan and then from uh, North Sulawesi and then from Lampung and we have many supporters and besides that, also involve uh, more than 3,000 community who involve. And also besides that, also because we have pre-events. So the pre-event also have some of supporters. And besides that, also uh, not only governments, because also we also um, supported by public figures. Uh, more than 100 influencers support us. And then the media partner also have uh, many supporters from working up in Indonesia. And then uh, this is a last statement from us. Uh, we believe that it doesn't matter who we are, where we come from. And the important thing that the ability to Trump begin with us. And we should always that miracle happens every day. So we are can together, even we can stay at home right now. And we hope that see you on September 18, 2021. Thank you, bye. Renita, thank you so much. And what a beautiful way to finish it by saying that we believe miracles can really happen. And miracles can happen, yes, but not without the hard work of people like you and your team there. So thank you so much for that beautiful presentation. You can finish sharing your screen now, uh, Renita, and I'm going to put it out to the floor. If someone would like to ask a question, please put it in the chat. I will see it here in front of me. Or else unmute your microphone. Tell me your name and where you're from. If you have a question... For Anita in Indonesia, unmute your microphone and tell us who you are and where you're from. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. People are saying in the comments they really liked it. It was very nice. A very inspirational uh, talk, people are saying. So five seconds left. If you have a question, unmute your mic. Say where you're from. Five, four, three, two. I can have a question. You have a question. Tell us your name and where you're from and take it away. Hi, my name is Marilyn and I'm from Estonia. Uh, my question would be, um, first of all, uh, really inspirational. But my question is, if you have to tell us like really like shortly, what do you think is the main reason that uh, Indonesia has been so successful? Okay, thank you. Uh Early from um, yeah, so this is good questions. Uh, why we are successful actually because our team we cannot uh, make this happen if we don't have a team, right? So uh, we divided into two teams. The first one is core team, and the second one is the local leaders. Uh, every um areas and right now around more than forty uh, leaders join this also in conference. So um, I also very um, appreciate from them because without them, we cannot work and we cannot uh, involve more than 4.2 million of volunteers and we also can handle more than uh, yeah around 4, 4 million. Um, sorry, it's about around um, the total of the waste that we already segregate. Yeah, every... Uh, areas. Okay, that is great. Thank you so much for the great question and for the great answer. I think so, we'll... Marily, I, uh, I... Croatia. Croatia has a question. Very quickly, Croatia. Croatia. Yeah, yeah, please. Croatia. Yes, you have your question. Yes, tell us who you are and where you're from. Damaris from Cam Damaris from Cameroon, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Cameroon, loud and clear. Tell us okay. what is your question for Indonesia. Okay, for Indonesia, I want to first of all congratulate for the great presentation. Uh, my question to Indonesia is about, I want to find out, so far the success is really a great, a great one. I want to find out, um, is the government involved in the activities? Is the government behind the volunteers or is just 
uh, a personal initiative without the involvement of the government? That's my question. Okay, thank you, uh, Carmen. It's very good questions. So actually, for the government, they on, they not only support uh, in the back, they also support us in the front. Why in the front? Because uh, like Ministry of um, Environment and Forestry, they support us uh, like a letter. So the letter is for the the branch of the the ministries, like because every province they have the office of min, uh, environment and also um, forestry. So every uh, region, every areas, the ministry help us to give like a letter of recommendation or letter of implementation actions. So every uh, so why um, our impact is bigger because uh, the role of the ministry because they are is like a um it's like policy makers and they make the policy and make a like a like a little bit note to the, the brands of the uh, ministries every cities to to do and also to help the events yeah thank you so I, much i hope uh, my answer can answer your questions Yes, you answered them very well. And that was a great question from Cameroon as well. We're going to keep on moving because we have more great talkers to come to. And we want to get as many questions in as possible later on as well. So thank you once again to Renita in Indonesia. Big virtual round of applause to Renita. Thank you so much, Renita. And before we move on, a quick reminder that um, this is called a laptop computer. And on it, you can do lots of cool things. But if you go to Facebook and you visit the official World Cleanup Day Facebook page, this presentation now, this, uh, this conference is being streamed live on Facebook Live on the main World Cleanup Day show. So the World Cleanup Day Facebook page. You know what I'm talking about. Go to World Cleanup Day on Facebook and you can share it with all your friends. And thanks to uh, Martin Grand. Martin Grand is a, a TV producer. He is a genius when it comes to television and video. And he is working that Facebook Live now. He was also behind the television broadcast at the World Cleanup Day show from Tallinn, Estonia. Him and his team, they're fantastic. So thank you, Martin. Now we are moving on from Indonesia to Tanzania. And we're going to say hello to Anna Rocca. Anna is talking about waste and brand audit to increase the impact of World Cleanup Day. So Anna in Tanzania, it is over to you. And hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, very inspiring and great presentation so far. Uh, let's go and share my screen as well. Here we go. Okay, so here in Tanzania, we have been also involved with the World Cleanup Day uh, since 2018. Um, and we actually have used the World Cleanup Day as a tool to collect data and to advocate for policy change. Um, we have a plastic bag ban that was influenced by the World Cleanup Day um, data, among other things. And we actually do cleanups along the year and to be able to do that. So talking a little bit about the situation that we have here in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, this on the left is actually a river. So you can see the state of the river. Um, and Dar es Salaam is a very, very beautiful city, uh, but it's also covered in waste. To give you an idea, um, sometimes we do, we do some marine litter surveys here and we go to certain spots, certain beaches of Dar es Salaam, and we clean every day for 13 days, and we collect 100 bags of waste every single day during 13 days. So the volumes of waste that we, that we deal with are very high. Um, so we also map the informal dump site, so then we can have an idea about where people are illegally dumping waste, and we can use that as well and with the media, with government, and to raise awareness, as you can see here. Uh, we do drone mapping, we do, uh, and that is send teams to do validation of those spots. And we also have people just walking around and mapping um, as usual. Um, so then why do we do waste and brand audits? Because here, um, even when you go and clean an area, as I said, like, a very um, one day, two days, three days after, normally the area is, is dirty again. So the waste and branch audits allow us to turn 
the World Cleanup Day and the cleanups into a long-term strategy and bring long-term results, as you can see. Um, we use, we do digital data collection. So we have, we use OGK, Open Data Kit, and um, Android phones that our team is trained to use. So we can record basically everything. And these are just examples of the screens um, that come on the phone. And then with the data that we collect, then we produce this kind of graphs. So for example, for World Cleanup Day 2020, uh, these are some of the results that we have. So if you see on the right, the waste audit, this is the unit count for different kinds of waste. So you can see plastic beverage bottles, you can see plastic bottle caps, aluminum beverage cans, and it's, that's exactly the unit count that we have done um, in the country. And on the left, you can see recyclable, reusable, and upcyclable waste with the same, the, the percentage of each one of these um, categories of waste um, in the waste that was found during the World Cleanup Day. We are not able, able actually <clears throat> to audit things, all the waste that we collect because we collect way too much, like we collect thousands and thousands of bags. Um, but this is, we use a 10% um, sample. And so here you can see the results for hazardous and residual waste as well. It can show you basically uh, the different kinds of waste, the counts and the percentages of them. Um, and here comes a very important portion of this, which is the brands, brands that we find. And so by the moment that we actually segregate the waste, we also start counting the brands so that we can know basically who is producing the waste that is here, where, is it, where it's coming from, and all of that. So you can see here um, the brand results that are very interesting. And one of the things that the World Cleanup Day allowed us to know is that 75% of the waste that we actually find comes from Tanzanian companies, which you can see here. So the big, the big two squares are actually the two main producers in Tanzania, and they produce over 41% of the waste that we actually find um, in our cleanups. So that helps with advocacy, um, and that helps us moving towards our desired change with the Tanzania of clean rivers, waterways, and oceans. Um, that has the, the population, basically the community, um, being part of the change. So uh, we use that, that for, from the World Cleanup Day, we are able to go with the knowledge portion of the focus. Um, so basically the, the data collection and the action because we bring people together and then that is used to influence policy. So basically all the areas of focus for Nipe Fagio are somehow uh, related to the World Cleanup Day and benefit from the World Cleanup Day and allow us to bring results that are long term. Um, beyond the cleanup itself. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. This is our team. And here also my email address and WhatsApp number in case anyone wants to know more or anyone has any questions. Thank you. Anna, Roca, thank you so much. And you were bang on time as well. So we appreciate that uh, <laughs> presentation there from, um, yeah, that was fantastic. And we are going to put it out to the floor now very quickly. If anyone has a question they would like to ask, Please unmute your microphone now. Tell us your name and where you're from. We'll give you a few seconds to do that. If anybody has a question for Anna in Tanzania. I have a question. Anna, what's the weather like today in Tanzania? Um, always sunny, always hot. Especially in Dar Salaam specifically, like it's hot and humid and, and sunny all the time. And let me ask you, what's behind you, Anna? Because I see in the sand there are all these brushes <laughs> upside down. What's going on? Yeah, so, <laughs> so I work for an organization called Nipe Fagio. Nipe Fagio is Swahili for Pass Me the Broom. So this is one event that we have done, and these are the brooms on the sand ah. at the cleanup at the beach. I just learned some Swahili. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, enough of me talking nonsense. I'm looking at the chat here. People really enjoyed um, your talk. Hello, Anna, says Carlos. If you would like to ask a question, we just have a few seconds before we move on to Mart in Estonia. So we'll give you five seconds. Hello, Colum. Yes. Hello. Hi, Anna. 
Hi to Hello. everyone, firstly. <laughs> um, great presentation, Hi, Anna. Yes, I have a question for you. The environmental literacy program um, that you're going to roll out, rolling out to schools, how important do you think this program is, especially for Southern Africa? And what do you see um, the milestones? How do you wish to achieve your milestones? Yeah, so when you think about the school engagement, uh, we also have been doing, um, we right now have a plan, we are doing waste and brand audits through the schools, so the students are leading those, um, exactly to get the students basically connected to the data and to understand um, how to prove their case using things that they can find and they can see. So you know that changes do take a long time. And so in, involving students is extremely important so that the kids actually grow up with the right mindset because it's easier for that to happen, that to change the mindset of the people that are already grown up. Um, schools are also important for policy. So we can also use um, the achievements that we have at the school to influence policy and to bring politicians together. Um, so it's it's extremely important to somehow connect education with the cleanups um, themselves. Great. Thank you so much. Great question. And that looks beautiful and sunny. I like seeing that walk. I like that swag. Good swagger. And uh, Anna, thank you once again. <laughs> Round of applause, thank everyone, you. for Anna in Tanzania. <laughs> yes. Who's sitting in a cafe having a cappuccino or a latte or something like that. Um, now we are moving on. And now we're going to talk about something like this. Music. Colum, what's music got to do with World Cleanup Day? Have you lost your mind? What's music got to do with World Cleanup Day? What's sport got to do with World Cleanup Day? What has the church and religion got to do with World Cleanup Day? These are all questions we ask ourselves all the time. And to answer these questions, we have a presentation from Na Mart Normat, who is in Tallinn, Estonia. And the president is still behind Mart, kneeling down. Is she praying, Mart, or what is she doing? Yeah, I mean, she's picking up cigarette butts, as you all can see, probably, no? Yeah, but she's been frozen like that for ages to ask her to move or do something. I mean, I can't order president to do anything. I mean, she has her own will. I mean, she's president of Estonia, right? <laughs> that, Mart, you should be the president of Estonia. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I understand we are live globally. So thank you, Colm, for that. <laughs> so uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> we are back in Estonia. And yes, this is our lovely president. Uh, and previously, you saw our former prime minister, who also has been involved in cleaning. So basically, what um, what, what you can imagine is that uh, World Cleanup Day is a pretty big thing in Estonia. Everybody knows about it. And, um, and I would say that uh, most people have been out cleaning, uh, whether on the same day or at least on any other day. And uh, yeah, so, so this is quite the Estonian thing to do. But we are constantly trying to find new ways to keep it fresh, to keep uh, cleaning cool, especially as we have our main target group, uh, school children. Right. And um, you might remember from Haiti's presentation that 2% uh, of Estonians were out. And I would say that majority of them actually were school children. And also educational wise, I see that this is one of the best target groups it's possible to have. And uh, you might remember Nup, who sang us the song. Nup has been our clean world ambassador for years already. And now I would like to show you some videos. The first video is uh, from the uh, clean world ambassadors and it is targeted to the younger generation. And as you might understand from the video, it is flirting with Tarantino movies. And, uh, and some of you might even notice two references to Tarantino movies in that clip. So Holger, if you are ready, please share the screen with the first video. Now you all might have heard rumors about cigarette buds destroying our mother nature. Well, we're going to change that. We're going to be dropped into that nature and we're going to be doing one thing and one thing only. That's picking up them cigarette butts. 
me pidime ju kehastuma Once Upon a Time in Hollywoodi tegelasteks. Correcto. Aga sa oled ju praegu Inglorious Bessersi tegelane. Meie pidime teile lihtsalt vaimukalt infot edastama, et 19. septembril on toimuvas maailmakoristuspäev World Cleanup Day. Just nii. Eelmisel aastal korjati selle raames üle miljoni koni ja teeme nii, et see aasta saame veelki rohkem. Kohtume 19. septembril. So that was a pretty absurd take on World Cleanup Day. But it traveled pretty well. So those were three actually pretty prominent young singers from Estonia. Um, then we had a little flirt with the Basketball Federation in Estonia because they had their 100th birthday last year. And uh, together we thought what could be a cool thing to do. And they had in mind, what about, uh, what about achieving a Guinness record? on the same day as the cleaning takes place. So it is not confirmed yet, but the number is so high that it will be confirmed. So yes, we have achieved a Guinness record during the World Cleanup Day. So uh, Holger, please roll the clip number two. This is a historic moment in, uh, in the World Cleanup Day history because we are here on the basketball court together with the Secretary General of Estonian Basketball Federation. <laughs> uh, and uh, together we are making history because uh, you and all the Estonian people want to throw in how many times free throws? 100,000 100, uh, uh, made shots. Wow, 100,000 shots in, and uh, what's the number at this moment now? It's uh, around uh, 95,000 uh, shots has been made, so it's we are very close. And you personally, have you been cleaning already, or you will go after the shots have been made? Yeah, of course, we started in early in the morning, 8 o'clock. Uh, I st started uh, to clean full Estonia, and also I've been made uh, uh, 200 shots myself uh, uh, in, in this morning. So. Crazy, crazy, crazy Estonian. So, I mean, Guinness World Record is what is being made here today. It is 100,000 shots in free throws and uh, cleaning together Estonia with all the basketball players who we can find in Estonia. History has been made. I, I'm not sure if you guys believe it or not, I have been playing basketball myself as well when I was a teenager. Uh, and um, when looking up to you, uh, then uh, I would uh, not want to play basketball anymore, but uh, still. Uh, okay, guys, I will show you something. Come in, follow me. Look, 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 look. This is a cigarette butt. So we are on actually two missions at the same time. Cleaning cigarette butts and throwing in free shots. Uh, And free throw. So this is Guinness World Record. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's just amazing. Feels great. <laughs> yep, guys. So I encourage every one of you to find uh, maybe different sort of um, activities, maybe to add to your cleanups to make it more fun, to make it more approachable for those people who might uh, maybe not want to come only for cleaning. But then again, we can have them all if we, if we really reach out. And the last video I want to show you is, uh, is about inner cleanup. Yes, we are mostly doing outer cleanups, right? We go out and clean. But what about cleaning ourselves from inside? And uh, we in Estonia had this idea that we should clean first inside and then go outside. Um, yeah, let's roll the clip number three, please. Tämä on maailma päev. Oleme siin viimsi vaba koguduses selleks, et puhastada oma sisemaailma ja minna välja koristama prügi. We 
jumalandis inimestele selle maailma, siis seal on pigem pilt sellisest peremehest. Et ole peremes ja valits, aga, aga kui me täna vaatame enda ringi, siis see pigem meid kutsutakse olema tarbija. Ja ma usun, et selle maailma koristuspäeva üks võlu ongi see, et me saame olla eeskujuks. Väri hõu! See on jätta niimoodi siia kivide alla kiilu, seda vist ei, ei õnnestu ilma ekskavaatorita, kui et kivid üles võtta. Kaks teevad tööd ja kolm vaatavad. Ja. Et selline on siis töökultuur. Ja. See on elu. <laughs> see on elu! Kutsume üles kõiki palvetama Eesti maa Eesti rahva pärast, kui me korjame prügi ja tõnnistada oma maadi rahvast, et Jumala vaim looks uut, looks muutust inimeste südametes, inimeste eludes, et, et see prügi ei kukuks ei mee hinge ega ka maha, vaid et seda prügi eriti ei tekikski. Yeah, I think we lost uh, lost a bit in the translation there because of the quality. Uh, but uh, I think the overall message was there. Thank you so much, Holger, for sharing the videos. Um, and I think that this uh, this last bit, uh, yeah, doing prayers and doing the cleanup uh, together. This is a format which we would like actually to 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 discuss with uh, whole global. Uh, uh, company we have here so whoever is interested please uh, contact me maybe we can build something really great and big out of that to add also inner cleanup to the outer cleanup i will uh, put uh, all the links to the videos here as well to our chat and my contact so so let's keep in contact guys so uh, yeah we, we we had so much things going on in estonia i hope you enjoyed uh, some bits of that mart Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation and just incredible to see how you uh, sport was involved and then the inner cleanup as well with Brit, just really well done. Pushing the boundaries, being innovative and that's what keeps it fun, that's what keeps it interesting for everyone. So let's see, Mart, if anyone has a question for you about what you did or how you did it, if you do have a question for Mart, just unmute your microphone and tell us your name and where you're from. We'll give you a few seconds to do it. Question for Mart. Mar can always ask uh, what the weather is in Estonia. Well, Mar you know what? You know how the president behind you is picking up uh, cans? But the photograph, I thought when I first looked at it, she had a can balanced on her head. Let's talk for a second so your photograph comes up again. You need to talk so we see you full screen. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> That's a tra traffic uh, sort of, uh, I think... Uh think there may be yeah well whatever good point i thought she was balancing a can on her head and i thought yeah. that's very impressive but we so have sun here as well does, <laughs> does anybody have a question for mart you have five seconds five hello colin can you hear me it's yes, ignas from, you. yeah it's ignas from lithuania uh i have actually a question and kind of an idea i, I was really impressed by this uh, basketball federation and one hundred thousand shots made and I'm thinking if next year of walking up day, we could do the global Guinness record with basketball shots made in 100 countries, let's say, 10, mil 10 million shots made or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's really great idea. Really great. Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. Thank you, Lithuania. Uh, anyone else a question for Mart before we move on? Unmute your microphone and tell us your name, where you're from. Don't be shy because we're all friends. <laughs> Hi, Thomas from Iceland. Hey, hey. Uh, Mark, can you send me an email? Can you find my email within the left steward world? I tried to send you email. Okay. All right, because I got an idea for you. Okay? Lovely. Great. Ideas are good. Ideas are what we like. So, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. A uh, big round of applause, everyone, for Mark. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Mark, we love you. We love you. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
we're moving on now from Martin. We're going to our host, uh, Holger Holland. Holger Holland hasn't slept in four months organizing this conference. He is in Munich in Germany. We are coming to you from Germany for this uh, conference. So let's go over to uh, Holger now. Holger, you are going to be talking about... Um, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. We are not going to Holger yet. I skipped somebody by accident. We're going to talk about successful organization of the World Cleanup Day 2020 in Ethiopia. My apologies, Holger. Stand by for another few minutes. And we're going over to Haraguan. Haraguan, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, Haraguan. We, I nearly skipped you by accident. How dare you? I'm, I apologize. Do you forgive me? Well, <laughs> I'll think about it. Think about it. And I look forward to your presentation. It's over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Heidi, congratulations on everything. So many people. So should I say good morning, good afternoon, everyone, the world, greetings in all language. So this is Harek. You can just call me Harek. That is much easier. Uh, for those of you who have never heard of the country Ethiopia, we are found uh, uh, in the eastern corner at the Horn of Africa. I should have brought a map here. Hmm. Uh, am I having um, my presentation on or shall I project? Whichever you find easier, Harig. So okay. if you would prefer to share so, it or whichever you prefer. Okay, so let me try. So. And it's Harig, not Hagrid, like from Harry Potter. No, it's Harig. <laughs> Just checking. All right. So I'm one of those people who have never heard of uh, World Clean Up Day a year ago, as you can imagine. But then here we are being the biggest mobilizers in Africa. So a little bit about UN Habitat. This is a UN body that deals with uh, uh, human settlements and urban issues. We are global. Uh, we have presence in many countries. Uh, a little bit about Ethiopia. Uh, we are the second most populous country uh, in Africa. Um, so um, we are not that urban. So uh, even though we have um, uh, our urban percentage at 22% uh, from the total population and we are growing fast, um, but we believe we, uh, our cities contribute a lot towards the economy of the country and us being UN Habitat, we mostly focus on uh, sustainable uh, cities and communities. So for those of you who don't know, that would be sustainable development goal number 11, but we also cover other sustainable uh, goals in order to achieve uh, all the goals, hoping before the time ends. And then as UN Habitat, we have um, country goals, uh, specifically for Ethiopia, we work on four pillars. So the uh, waste um, uh, issue comes under uh, urban environment and basic services. So that's the wing we are working on. And gladly, we are also implementing a, a new country program uh, that is going to be implemented for the coming five years and um, uh, solid waste management is going to be one of the branches that we will focus on. Um, uh, a little bit about waste in Ethiopia. Uh, generally, um, waste is a problem like most countries, but what makes it special in Ethiopia is that we have actually a very low coverage of uh, solid waste management service in, in not just in the capital Addis Ababa, but in most cities in Ethiopia. So um, according to data, uh, we know that less than 50% of uh, locally generated uh, waste is collected. So just like um, the pictures that you saw uh, from Tanzania, the picture that you see on the right is um, a small river and what you can see uh, on the side is, this is just a dumping ground. So people find it easier uh, to dump waste in areas that are not so uh, visible. Um, as UN Habitat, uh, we've been uh, in Ethiopia since 1998, but we are um, implementing projects since 20, 2013. So one of our biggest projects is um, the 
uh, rehabilitation of dump sites. So the picture that you see in the left is the biggest dump site uh, in Ethiopia, uh, which uh, unfortunately a couple of uh, years back uh, had collapsed and uh, ended up again, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, in the days of uh, more than 100 people who were residing uh, close to the dump site. So the intervention of uh, UN Habitat came about this time uh, with the uh, um, waste dump site um, sorting met methodology that, that, that had been uh, uh, tested and applied in Japan. So this Fukuwa method uh, was um, proposed uh, uh, as a rearrangement in the stabilization of uh, this waste dump site. Uh, so you can see the progress uh, starting in May uh, all the way to March. Uh, and uh, we are not only implementing it in Addis, but also in uh, other secondary cities. So Addis Ababa, Bahardar, Hawassa. These are projects that are being implemented uh, uh, through UN habitats and more and more cities are coming forward uh, now that they understand the benefits of um, having a, a, a strategic, strategically safer, safer way of, um, um, oops, <laughs> okay, arranging range sites. And then coming back to uh, World Cleanup Day. So someone had said it has to be fun. Yes, it was fun even for, for us. So um, a couple of us are, have uh, design backgrounds. So these are the couple of um, posters that we did. And of course we had to be conscious about um, COVID. We participated, everyone uh, grateful for the participation of the Ministry of Construction and Housing Development. Um, the, the one that you see in the middle is the mayor of Addis and then other city leaders in, in major cities were also uh, part of the event. So it was a really a knock on effect with uh, COVID conscious uh, manner. We had uh, our mask on one side with UN Habitat logo and the other with World Cleanup Day. So you can imagine and then everyone was involving. So these are a couple of numbers from uh, major cities. Uh, that participated 100, uh, no, 850,000 plus uh, all in all, everybody from all walks of life. And then of course, um, we are grateful for everyone uh, participating uh, in that event. And of course, UN Habitat was also appreciated by the city government of Addis Ababa. We even got a cup and a certificate of recognition. So what do we, in See in the future for Ethiopia, well, uh, a clean city, clean cities, clean world in the future. And we are also working with WasteWise. We are hoping to do um, the intervention from backwards, from waste dumping sites all the way to the backyards of people, cleaning every house, every city and the world. We are hopeful and we know we'll do it. Thank you so much. Eric, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. You said you would think about it. Do you forgive me now? Oh, yeah. You forgive because me Because I now. finished on time. <laughs> thank you so much UN Habitat in Ethiopia that was a great presentation and that cooperation between World Cleanup Day and UN Habitat as you said the logo on one side and the other logo on the other side is just fantastic if anyone has a question for Harig please uh, unmute yourself now tell us where you're from and your name and ask your question you have a few seconds to do so don't miss this great opportunity guys Excuse me, um, I have my question. I have a question, please. Yes, go ahead. Tell us your name and where you're from. Hello, everyone. Good night, good afternoon, good morning. I am Alpin Zermindo Prima. I'm sorry, it's a black, uh, a black window in here. I'm from Indonesia. Hello, Harrigan from uh, Ethiopia, right? Yes. Yes. So I have uh, this uh, many, many thing questions for you, but uh, I have write in my book. Okay, this uh, work can work can update or this action do during a week or one decade in one year, right? Yes. Yes. So what uh, we know that garbage is generated every day from human activity. That's from domestic, factory, office, and then and how or what to 
uh, Ethiopia do to reduce garbage every day? And what impact from human in your country? And then uh, could this action done continuously? So uh, it's not uh, doing uh, just one week, but it's done continuously every day. Oh, okay. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um... So um, unfortunately, as a country, we are not doing much um, sort thing. Yes. So uh, the, uh, everybody knows that what one month's garbage is another month's valuable. So there's a lot of recycling going on, but not in, in a way that um, uh, most um, uh, Western countries would do. So they don't end up in factories but people tend to um, find ways of reusing uh, materials that are discarded. Uh, plastic is one uh, area that we um, feel that we need to intervene in because uh, as you know, it's um, uh, becoming a problem all over the world. So we have um, uh, the, those people who are um, finding jobs out of uh, collecting these uh, plastic bottles. So that is one uh, area that people uh, feel that um, they need to separate on. So plastics are usually separated, but other garbage, not so much, unless it's for a reuse. And then in terms of um, country, uh, again, because the municipal uh, waste collection is really at the lower uh, penetration, we rely on um, these associations who uh, do the waste picking and sorting on their own. And then we are also not so good with composting. So again, that is an area that um, I, every uh, one at um, individual level uh, should involve in. So we are hoping that um, by being in, in, in the waste uh, system, at least we can educate the people in such a way that uh, the waste that is collected and ending up uh, at the dump sites could reduce. So we are hopeful, still hopeful that we can reduce the waste. Thank you. Thank you. Harik, thank you so much. And uh, thank you very much for that great question as well. And it's just, it's great to hear the variety of questions coming from all over the world. And I know that we're a bit over time, so we're going to say thank you, Harig, and uh, you and Habitat in Ethiopia. Thank you so much. Virtual round of My applause. My pleasure. My pleasure. Harry Potter. All right, thank you so much. Okay, we're going to move on now to the man that I put before you. He is the man behind uh, much of the organization. Of course, it's all teamwork. And it is Holger Holland in Let's Do It Germany in Munich. Holger, it's over to you. Yes, thanks for that. Um, but I will now hand over to Philip so I can further take care and continue con continue take care about the tech part. And so I give up. This is very confusing. So she's handing to me, I'm handing to you, and you're handing to Philip. You. <laughs> Philip. <laughs> Perfect. So it's it's going hand in hand, Colm. So everything is fine. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Holger. Um, as you see in Germany, um, the president uh, is really serving now as a tax support. So um, I'm totally welcome to um, uh, take over at this point. Um, and tell you something about what we did in Germany last year on World Cleanup Day um, and probably what our strategic uh, issues are uh, at that point. So now I try to share my screen, which might be this one, and you might see our presentation, uh, which is entitled with the cooperation is the key. And that is exactly something we found out in Germany. As you may know, we're um, in this organization like Let's Do It Germany, um, for now two and a half years. So uh, the, it was our third uh, work cleanup day, the third uh, work cleanup day we did as uh, Let's Do It Germany. What we found out for us as uh, Germans um, that it's really important to um, have a look on how we create corporations uh, with several players in society. Of course, uh, the um, issues are always in any place in the world different. Uh, we heard a lot about that and it really breaks my heart when I when I see and listen what happens in, in Africa, for example, this is unbelievable, to be honest, and um, uh, um, gives me a lot of uh, uh, anger and uh, motivation to go forward with this project and that it's really uh, important to do so. Um, what we did last year, even in pandemic times, subtitle of uh, this uh, little keynote, 
is that we really doubled in Germany our numbers. Like the third time we doubled our numbers, we uh, tenfolded our funding money we got last year, and it is just the beginning of a success story, to be honest. Because as you may know, Germany has around about 80 million people, and we have around about uh, nearly 100,000 participants had last year on World Cleanup Day in Germany. So 5% of 8 million, uh, 80 million are around about 4 million. So there's a little gap we have to kind of fill up in the next years. But I'm very, very positive that we will uh, manage that. So me, Philip, I'm the vice president of Let's Do It Germany. So um, uh, I will give you a little, little impression of what we did last year in uh, Munich, because we have been in Munich last year at World Cleanup Day too. So this is uh, partly pictures from World Cleanup Day in Munich, uh, especially on the right side. You see, we did um, for Munich a lot of um, uh, more artistic stuff to really get the, the crowd down there. Uh, what we do um, is we try to, to focus each year on another region in Germany. 2018, we have been uh, at our first World Cleanup Day in Berlin. Uh, which was a really big su success. Um, uh, in 2019, we went to Frankfurt in Hesse. And uh, as you see last year, we have been in Munich. Um, uh, and even there, uh, a big thank to um, uh, Mayor Reiter uh, from, from the, the government of uh, Munich, who really uh, made it possible that we have been there last year. Even uh, between those pandemic shutdowns and everything, and everything was worked out. Uh, you heard him in the opening ceremony. Uh, thank you to that. Um, what also was important for us last year, we had two big uh, partners um, or two relevant um, uh, supporters that really made this possible in Munich. Um, on the one hand, there was um, a, a radio station which gave us round about, I don't know, three hours of net time on the radio with interviews, with promotion for being part um, uh, in the World Cleanup Day, taking part in that, in the whole nationwide uh, uh, um, radio stations they got. That was, was really fantastic. And we also had um, another uh, partner which was uh, really important for our success in Munich which was a platform um, uh, neben an de, it is called. It's a German uh, platform where neighbors can gather and um, organize um, what they uh, um, have in mind. And um, I would like to uh, welcome on stage for just a very, very quick uh, introduction of what they do to show you that there are good partners out there that are really worth to work with. Um, uh, Jonas from neben an de, I don't know if he's still here. Uh, Jonas, if you want to say some words, this would be your chance. Yes, Philip, I'm still here. Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, I won't take up too much of your time, just give a quick uh, idea of why we actually collaborated. Um, so we are German social uh, business and we're trying to build a platform to help people feel at home in their neighborhood. So sustainability for us is a core part of our mission. It's just uh, fits right in there. Um, and we actually did cleanup collaborations in the past with municip municipal partners and uh, our users have used the platform um, for the past years to already start cleanup collaborations. So when Philip came to us and approached us, it was obvious that a collaboration would be just a big win-win situation. Um, so we included the World Cleanup Day Germany in our communication and exposed the campaign to our user base of about 1.6 million people. And I think we managed to send a couple of thousands to the registration page and also encourage neighbors to post about um, the campaign in their neighborhood, start a cleanup action themselves, invite neighbors. Uh, and I think, uh, and Philip, maybe you can say some more things about this, but uh, that especially last year with this situation, it was obvious that Neighbor Ande is an important tool or that online tools are really uh, necessary to, to um, engage people in these times. And I just want to, to highlight one anecdote of a Berlin neighbor um, who has been doing cleanups over the last three years. And he's actually been organizing over 20 cleanups. He does them every month. And he has been connecting yeah, dozens, if not hundreds of people and removed about five tons of waste from his neighborhood. So just one person in that case, uh, getting people together from his neighborhood. Um, yeah, and in 2021, we want to deepen the collaboration, get more neighbors on the street, uh, and also involve our French and Spanish platforms. Um, and just, just to, to part with, uh, I want to just say that 
wherever you are in the world, uh, you always have a neighborhood and you can see it as a resource and as a big potential uh, driver for getting and rallying uh, um, people uh, to help you. And there's many neighborhood platforms out there in the world. I know that Neben Ande is not the only one. Yeah. So take a look at them and use them uh, to get people together. Perfect. Thank you, Jonas. So this is really, I can't um, uh, underline it more uh, clearly. There was really a very, very good um, uh, a win-win situation last year, of course, because um, otherwise I think it wouldn't have been that big. And I said it um, uh, in the beginning, uh, we more than doubled uh, our participants in Germany, even through this pandemic, pandemic times. So this was really, really a big, big, big thing for us. So thank you, Jonas. And I'm looking forward for, to the cooperation this year. Um, and to not uh, lose too much time, I also want to um, uh, remark, get a, do a remark on what we also do, uh, did. Um, the topic patrons. We really got last year every state secretary in the country who is um, uh, um, doing the uh, environmental affairs in the federal countries in Germany to be our, one of our patrons. We also got one prime minister from Saarland who, um, uh, thank you, Kaum, um, who uh, 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 said that uh, uh, the people should go out and, and support our project. And so this is a quite, quite important part. Um, and we're working on, working on that, uh, especially in 2020, uh, 2021, where there are um, federal elections in Germany. This will be quite a big thing. Um, and last but not least, um, you see here one important thing we tested last year too. This was the ambassador down in the, on the right side. Christine Figner was uh, first ambassador of Let's Do It uh, Germany for the World Cleanup Day 2020 and became then ambassador for the whole global movement. She's a fantastic person. She's also on this conference. So if you um, like to uh, listen to her words, she is somewhere in the program. I don't know the date right now, but uh, feel free to... Um, to join her and listen to her. She's fantastic. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud to have people like that in our uh, movement and in our um, uh, German chapter. And so it's uh, great. And not to take more time than seven minutes. I hope it's fitting, uh, Com. I give back to you and thank you very much. Yeah. You had to use it, the foghorn, but we, you, you deserve it all the time because so much work has gone in for bad. Germany to make all this happen. So thank you everyone who is uh, taking part, led by Holger there. I like that Holger passed to someone else who passed to someone else. We're all, everyone's joining hands in this together, so it's fantastic. Very quickly, if you want to stop sharing your screen, we can get it back in the gallery view. And if anyone would like to ask a question to Let's Do It Germany, who are uh, hosting the conference this year, well then... Uh, unmute your microphone, tell us your name and where you're from. Do we have a question from anyone? If you'd like to unmute your microphone and say your name and where you're from. I hear a voice there. Do we have a question? My no? name is Abdel Fattah. Yeah. I'm Abdul Fattah Hussein uh, from Somalia, uh, near to Ethiopia. Uh, if you, if anyone does not know Somalia, it is uh, at the horn of Africa. So my question is, uh, how does the uh, refugees that come to Germany, mainly from Syria, participate in your work? How do, you, how often do you inv involve them in your work? Good question. Um, I think I didn't get it totally. There was a. I'll repeat the question just yep. for time's sake. But he was saying that the um, refugees that come to Germany from Syria and Iraq, I think it yep. was those countries, just refugees. Do you involve them in the cleanup, or are they able to be involved in the cleanup? Yeah, of course they are. Um, that's uh, especially a reason why we try to really go on this local community platforms and else to really um, engage as many people as possible. Um, we didn't have a, a, a strong focus on that throughout the last years because we, at first of all, of course, try to uh, build up the, the foundation of, um, of Let's Do It Germany and how we organize the World Cleanup Day. Uh, but um, yes, it is, it is a great idea for the future. And I know that there were some uh, local areas where there were many refugees supporting um, the, the cleanups and uh, using it as um, 
um, uh, an option to get in touch with the people. So it's a really great project for, for getting in touch with um, uh, refugees and, and locals. Thank you very much, uh, Philip, from Let's Do It Germany and to Mr. Hassan in Somalia for that question. Thank you. Big round of applause virtually everybody for Let's Do It Germany. Boom, boom, boom. And we are going to move on quickly now. Before we go to our next speaker, um, even though this conference is being hosted by Let's Do It Germany, uh, I am actually sitting in Rome, in Bella Italy, Bella Roma. I'm right beside the Vatican. So that's from Pope Francis. But uh, we're going to talk to Italy, the head of Let's Do It Italy shortly. But before we do that, we're going to try something now to get an idea of what has been inspiring you people all over the world as you've been watching this conference. We're about to put a link. If you look at the chat, everybody, we're going to put a link in there. And it's for a website called menti.com. You see it there, menti.com. If you go to menti.com on your phone, go to menti.com on your phone and put in the code. And the question is three presentations that inspired you personally the most. Which three, you have to pick from those ones, inspired you the most. So go to menti.com right now, put in that code from the chat and answer the questions. Which three presentations inspired you the most? And we'll see which ones are coming top of the list. This is live information, by the way. These uh, numbers and graphs are coming in as you answer it on your phone. If you need to get the code again, just move your mouse on the screen and click the chat button at the bottom of the Zoom and you'll see the website there, menti.com and you'll see the code, 67, sorry, 6170971. Which three inspired you the most? Oh, by the way, sorry, the code is also on the screen there. Look at the top of the screen, menti.com. And the code is there after it. On your phone, vote which three inspired you the most. That's pretty cool. Indonesia seems to be leading with 22 votes. And I know that Augustina and the team in Let's Do It Indonesia have always been so inspirational from the very beginning. The hard work that they put in and the huge amount of people. I remember the first year they got involved and they mobilized millions of people in their first year, millions. Iran, of course, is also very inspiring because of the sanctions they have imposed on them, the government restrictions, the, the prevention of crowds gathering, and they fight through that to still get great results. Estonia, of course, uh, is going to get high points because it's where it all started. And the United States is getting lots of points because Bill and Steve are just hilarious. We'll let the voting go on for another minute or so because I know people are still getting the chance. And don't forget to mute your microphone. I think it looks like we have a winner, everybody, so far. I mean, we could wait for some more votes, but I don't think it's going to change the balance too much. It looks like Indonesia are in the lead with the most inspirational. Of course, they're all fantastic, but this is just so far what has spoken to you personally, what has inspired you. So Indonesia first with 37 votes, and then we've got Estonia. That's Haiti with 27. And uh, we have Iran after that, and then everyone's getting great votes, but Indonesia, people are still voting. Oh, this is fun. This is great. I know we can't be together in person because of that thing we're not allowed to talk about. And by the way, we hope that that thing that we're not allowed to talk about hasn't affected you too badly. Of course, everyone's on lockdown, but we hope that your family are safe and well. But it's great that we're able to do this virtually. And so far, I think it's been going pretty smoothly. I mean, it's always a bit crazy with microphones open and feedback. Um, but there you go. Okay, Farastia, you can finish sharing the screen. Big round of applause. Indonesia. So far, the most inspirational. Followed by Estonia. And then followed, tied by Iran and Ethiopia. Are in tied position. Then Tanzania. And then Germany and the United States. So well done. You can take it off the screen now. And we'll go on to our next speaker. 
Uh, we're going to actually work through the break because we're quite over time. And don't worry, because when we get to the party tonight, even though I'm drinking tea, we're all going to have a drink together, have a bit of fun. And it won't be me talking like this, annoying everybody. It will be us talking together. We'll get your party pieces, your songs. Uh, we're going to find out more about each other. We're going to call on people by surprise. So it's going to be fun. Be warned. Now, I'm in Italy right now, and the head of Let's Do It Italy, Vincenzo. Vincenzo is here to talk about from going from 1,000 volunteers in 2013 to over 150,000 in 2020, right here in Italy. So, Vincenzo, it's over to you. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm good. How are you, my friend? My friend of passion. Uh, thank you. I'm so sad to stay there. To hug you and everyone, of course, but I am so happy to share my, our experience with you. And it is good. It is, it is great to have you here. We can hear you loud and clear. Maybe come a little bit closer to the camera, but please take away your presentation. Let us hear. Okay, I open my presentation, but uh, you, do you listen to me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear your beautiful Italian accent. We can hear it perfectly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I, I'd like to share with you the, our experience and uh, is uh, eight years that we are in, uh, um, in let's do it in, in, this big, in this big family that is the uh, let's do it world. And uh, in the first year we organized the um, one local election is uh, one uh, little place that uh, I am sure that you know, that is the uh, Vesuvio. Uh, we organized the cleanup action and uh, we involved 1,000 people of volunteers in eight years ago. Um, after, we worked a lot to involve uh, new people and uh, a lot of people, and uh, we changed a lot. And uh, we worked cleanup day in uh, 2018, and uh, we involved um, a, more, more people, of course, uh, respect to first time that was. Uh, eight years ago, and after three years ago in 1219, of course, was better. And uh, the last year with COVID, and uh, the result was very, very good. And uh, uh, I'd like you, um, I, I'd like to, um, to see the result uh, years for years. Years for years, and uh, the first years that was eight, eight years ago, um, we we organized four cleanup action, and uh, we collected uh, fifty tons of tire, plastic waste uh, mix, and uh, a lot of plastic in a little area that was a national park of Vesuvio. is a protected area, and uh, after uh, we involved of course, more and more people and uh, organize uh, 200 cleanups in all of Italy. Also in, uh, in Venice, for example, we clean up the river. In uh, National Park of Israel, we clean up the uh, protected area. And uh, in other parts of, the, uh, of Italy, we um, collected the, the waste in, uh, on the river and in forest. Um, the two years ago, in uh, 2019, uh, we organized a more cleanup action, uh, but not only cleanup action. Also, uh, in Milan, for example, we organized the, uh, during the fashion week, the um, fashionable um, fashionable art week, and uh, uh, with the, uh, with model and uh, with actor and. Uh, um, with uh, famous people that spoke about um, sustainability and uh, environmental. And uh, the last year was very, very complicated, of course, because in Italy, not only in Italy, of course, um, with the problem of the, um, for COVID. And uh, we are so, um, we are not um, as involved the people. Uh, but last time um, uh, we uh, try to um, involve the, our partners, for example, the um, Decaro, the Romerland, and the NGO uh, municipality, and uh, uh, all of them said yes, 
I'd like to participate to World Cleanup Day. And uh, we uh, organized 3,000 cleanups in all of Italy. And uh, the, uh, more of the, um, the, the, the number was very, very different in uh, 2019. Um, and for us, it's uh, very satisfied uh, because of the COVID period. And uh, the, what is the key of the success is the cooperation, but cooperation with who? Uh, this is the question. And cooperation with associations, for example, and uh, we cooperate with WWF, with the Friday's procedure, with the Scouts, uh, with the uh, Zero Waste, uh, and uh, Lega Ambiente, but not only. Um, we cooperation with company. Uh, the company that we cooperate was a lot, for example, was uh, Decathlon, only Decathlon, for example, last year organized, involved the people to, um, to in, in all of Italy uh, and uh, organized uh, more of 2,000 actions, only, only Decathlon. And, uh, and it's very important to cooperate with the different companies uh, for solve the problem of waste. And the uh, cooperation with uh, protected area, protected area on the on sea and protected area in the in forest, for example. Cooperation for institutions. And uh, we uh, involve the, um, the different mayor, for example, the mayor of Rome, uh, the, the, our ministry, the environmental ministry to participate at cleanup action and to support us for communicate that it's important to clean, but uh, it's important to clean, but it's important also that uh, uh, the clean is, uh, is, is uh, uh, every time. And um, we, um, it's important the partnership also with Army or uh, with the Connect for Science, for example. Um, we continue, for example, our work to enforcement, model, actor, artist, influencer, and of course, blah, 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 because it's very, very, a lot of people that uh, participate and help us in, uh, in COP to involve new, a, a lot of people, of course, because without them, it uh, was very difficult to uh, involve the people to participate. And uh, uh, we choose uh, the last year to uh, promote three different actions. That is uh, the individual cleanup, the uh, group cleanup, and the digital cleanup. Is a three action that the people can choose. Um, usually the, the people should the individual cleanup uh, about for, for, of course, for a pandemic problem in, uh, in, in Italy. And, uh, um, the our, for example, the our influencers there we have also Erica Santos uh, that participate uh, is a part of team of fashionable economics um, that um, asked me uh, that wants she won't speak with you and I don't know. Uh, if, uh, so honored to talk with you guys. Okay. So honored to be part of the art, the fashion shows that Natalia organized. So honored to be that you are doing this meeting today about something about the world, have this important position of avoiding So the contribute of Erica is uh, very important because she's a uh, she's a big influencer and uh, she supports the the. Uh, Support us to organize the uh, the the fashionable eco art show during uh, uh, the um, the fashion week in uh, in Milan. Uh, so uh, also, for example, we have uh, we um, it, it's very important uh, for us uh, to arrive to um, to involve more and more people. It's important to collaborate uh, with the. Uh, with different people, for example, uh, with uh, with sportmen, 
with the uh, for uh, in agriculture uh, it's important for example for planting the tree it's important uh, organize the event for protection the human rights for example uh, in collaboration with Fridays for Future in, uh, in different square in, uh, in Italy uh, collaborate uh, for uh, educational program with the ministry and uh, with the, the our school uh, collaborate with collaborate also um for to invest uh, in a startup in technology startup for solutions to solve the use of problem of waste and for for us it's very important and for close the, the my my speech I, I don't know if you, if you remember last year about blah 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 uh, so one month ago also Greta Hammer spoke about blah 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 uh, blah 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 is a is a, a concept. Is a is a, she suggests to not make only blah blah blah, but make action and not blah blah blah. And uh, um, for us, it's very important. I use uh, one short term that was collaboration in uh, in Italy. Uh, maybe uh, I mistake this. Because the important is not collaboration. The important is uh, make a family. Uh, in Italy, uh, we have the key of success is not collaboration, but uh, the key of success is uh, because we are a family that won't solve one big problem. Thank you. Thank you to all. I don't know if there is as well. That is great. Vincenzo, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. You can stop sharing your screen and we'll get a virtual round of applause. I, I, I think there. that uh, I stay in seven minutes. <laughs> you, you went a little bit over seven minutes, but you know what? That's the passion and Italian people have a lot of passion, <laughs> Vincenzo. And I can see people are clapping on the screen here. So um, very quickly, because we're coming up to the party, we have two more presentations left, two short presentations, and then it is get to know each other time. And um, so if you would like to ask Vincenzo a question, well, then please ask the question now. Unmute your microphone, my friends, and tell us your name and where you're from. If you have a question for Italy, and if not, we'll move on to the next speaker, who's from the Netherlands. We'll give it five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Vincenzo, you are fantastic. Round of applause once again for Vincenzo. Thank you. But hey, well done. Bella, la vita e bella. Uh, thank you so much. Now we are going from Italy. We are going to the Netherlands, a fast growing movement in the Netherlands. It's building at a rapid pace. And to tell us more now, it's Robert Moring. So Robert Moring, it is over to you. Thank you, Colm. Good to be here. Nice to be here. I'm going to share my screen just now. Oh, there is another sc screen being shared. Yes, I think the, the person who's a, this person has oh. been, um, I'm not sure who it is, but they've been drawing beautiful things for the last uh, hour, yeah. two hours. So I think we yeah. should. Uh, we'll it's a creative to, person, though. Not, there's nothing against the drawings. <clears throat> They're beautiful art, and we have an artist with us. Yeah. But Robert, it's over to you. We're not complaining about the artist, never. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Beautiful. Perfect. 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 Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, well, good to see you, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm from, I'm Robert Meuring from the Netherlands, and I'm the project leader of World Cleanup Day in our tiny country. And I'm very pleased to uh, tell you our success story from last year, because as you can see on this map. This is a part of the Netherlands, and as you can see, we have pink dots everywhere. And every pink dot symbolizes a, a unique cleanup action on the uh, 19th of September last year. So it was basically all our country was covered full of pink, pink, uh, pink things. But before we get to the results, I would like to uh, tell you a little bit more about the last few years, because it all started in 2018. Um, we all started with World Clean Day in the Netherlands, and it was just... Uh, a number of 300 cleanups. And as you can see in the figure, it has been increasing tremendously into of until 2,500 unique cleanups in our country in 2020. And this also resulted in 
the number of uh, in an increase in the number of participants there where we had like 2000 only in 2018 and 16000 in 2019 we had like 40000 in 2020 so for us that's the proof that there is such a big support base for the uh, Dutch citizens to participate on an important day like World Cleanup Day and the last result which is also very important and I will explain a little bit more later on is is the litter uh, data. So the reason why we have World Cleanup Day is on the one hand to clean up the environment, to make to, to get rid of all the trash, the cans and the bottles and the wrappers and so on. But we do it because we also want to uh, get more knowledge and understanding about the, the specific items we find, which brands are most found, which items are the biggest problem. And with all this kind of data, we can really make a change and we can start working towards solutions. And I will give an example of a solution later on. But now seeing all the figures uh, in our evaluation last year, I called my colleague Karina, who is also in the conference at the moment. And I asked her, how the, did we fix this? These numbers were increasing massively. So what did we do good? And I think we can explain it very well according to a few uh, sort of building blocks. And the first one, uh, which made World Clean Day a success for us is having a home base, having a platform where people can get all the information they need to find, get checklists with the materials you need to bring along with you, um, how to deal with COVID, to keep distancing, wear gloves, the protection of stuff. But this whole platform was also um, uh, the place where people could sign up their own cleanup. So we basically encouraged everyone to map their own cleanup on the Netherlands. And if you want to, you can also ask everyone in your, in, your, in your surrounding, your family, your friends, your loved ones to join your cleanup and join forces on a specific day. So we basically created an environment where people could interact with one another while us being the one who had to intervene or who had to coordinate. People were coordinating their own cleanups and that's what we wanted to achieve. Secondly, cooperation has been mentioned multiple times uh, during the start of the conference but also for the Netherlands it's very important to work with municipalities to work with schools to work with big companies who had a lot of employees who have the money to 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 create those kind of cleanups and this is a perfect example of one of the biggest organizations and organizations in the Netherlands which is the, the national postcode lottery and they provided uh, uh, several cleaner throughout the country and at the spot they were providing the materials that people could could use while cleaning up the beaches or the rivers the shores or the city centers whatever you name it so i think working together with these kind of organizations is handy uh, but it's also very practical because you can spread the message to a bigger audience third is the the campaign machine we built so we had a lot of content on social media. We, we created our own content. We had free ads on radio, on television. We had like example you can see here, we had big screens next to the highway to attend people in advance and prior to World Cleanup Day to also join forces, sign up your cleanup, go to worldcleanupday.nl, get the information you need and put your pink pin on the map of the Netherlands. And I think this worked out so well that we were able to, to reach so many different kind of target groups, like the schools with the kids, for example, but also with the ambassadors of the Plastic Soup Foundation, who have kind of their own group of followers, like a radio DJ and a big uh, swimmer, a famous swimmer in the Netherlands. So those people were also uh, uh, encouraging their followers to join forces on World Cleaner Day. And I think the combination of all those communication mechanisms is perfect and worked out very well. Third, fourth, and last but not least, um, we invited the Vice President of the Euro Commission, Frans Timmermans, to officially launch World Cleanup Day. So we, we created a kind of broadcast, which was, of course, online and not physically, but we invited him in a broadcast. We talked with him about the problems of plastic pollution in the Netherlands, in the Euro European Union, and he kind of kicked off World Cleaner Day and gave uh, the official launch of World Cleaner Day. And nearly six to seven thousand people have been attending the live stream, which was pretty amazing. The reason, like I said, why we have World Cleaner Day in the Netherlands is for, of course, cleaning up the place around us. 
but it's also important to map the litter we find because only then we can make cleaning up really valuable. If we know the brands like Coca-Cola, which pops up in the top 10 every year, then we can confront them with the result and we can really stimulate them to make a real change. So we did. Uh, by encouraging everyone who was attending on World Clean Day in the Netherlands to also download the app Literati, start cleaning up, and while cleaning up, also photograph every item you find. So at some point you would see all the, the red dots you can see, they are all unique items. And imagine that you have like thousands of them covering the whole Netherlands, which is pretty amazing to see, but it's also very much a very much valuable input for us to start campaigning on. This is a result of the data. So on one single day, we were able to gather 127,000 unique items with the Literati app. So we, we've been analyzing that data. And here you can see that the, the, most, the, the most found items is a cigarette butt, like Heidi mentioned before, and the wrappers and the cans. So we have specific items we can focus on and we can attack the brands as well, because also we publish every, uh, every year on the same day, like World Cleaning Day. As a result, we publish the top seven most polluting brands. Um, it's very important to keep pressure on them. Well, this is in a sheet and I'm wrapping it up, uh, which is pretty amazing to me because in 2018 on the left side, we started with World Cleaning Day and we started with, for the first time, gathering the data from trash. The, the yellow bars are the dates of World Cleaner Day. So you can really see the impact of World Cleaner Day in the total amount of data we gather. And that's not nothing because for 2020, the average of items we gathered was 60,000, which is a lot per month. So we can start actively campaigning on that. And this is my final sheet. Um, it's a pretty sad photo though. It's, it's a poor animal uh, who is trapped in a cup of McDonald's um, and we don't want this. We don't want these cups of McDonald's in our environment. So our aim for next year is that we're gonna attack and we're gonna talk and we're gonna link the data we find, which you can see in the graph here. Uh, we're gonna link it to a solution with McDonald's. And as you can see from all the cups which were gathered in the investigation, 60% contained the logo of McDonald's. So to us, that is a clear signal. We have to start talking with McDonald's how we can fix this with reusable cups, for example, or with a deposit scheme on these cups. There, there are easy fixes and we are ready and uh, well, trust and confident that we can, uh, we can fight this solution. That will be it. Thank you. Great. Robert, thank you so much for that presentation about the situation in the Netherlands. And it was great to see all the mapping and the data. And very quickly, uh, you can f uh, stop sharing your screen now. That was fantastic. If anyone has a question for Robert and the Netherlands, unmute your microphone, tell us where you are, and you can ask your question now. We have yeah, five seconds. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I like you from Zambia. Zambia, yeah, go ahead with your question, Zambia. <laughs> okay, I like it. My name is Alaji from Zambia. Yes, we can hear you, Zambia. Are you hearing me? What would you like to ask? I'm this is a form of I'm seeking advice and motivation. I'm impressed what. Uh, he's talking about on all the or what they have been doing for the past week. First, we have been doing this for the past two years, but uh, what is the form? Um, as, and we need a form of evasion from him. What uh, do we do, do he have for us so that we can add more? But because we are just starting this just two years for the past two years. So we are asking advice from him so that our people can, so that I can send the message to our people so that we can do more and more and more for the community. Thank you. I'm not sure if I get the question. 
I, I think the line is too bad to go back and repeat the question, but I think it was um, how, how do we keep it going and do it more and more to keep the momentum up so it's not just maybe once a year focused on one time. I think that's what the question could have been like. But if you want to just touch on that, how to keep the momentum going all year round, Robert? Well, uh, well I think what helps is keep people motivated. So we should not be using uh, cleaning up the world as a one time and single thing on September. But I think we should do it like like on a structural basis. And if we can highlight the importance of the data which we gather while we are cleaning up, um, and we can also show them the public that we really make a change with with solutions which, which came out of that data, like this the, the example of McDonald's. If we can share that with everyone, and we can start in the Netherlands with this pilot deposit scheme, for example, and we can spread it out to the whole country and then to Belgium and Germany. And because McDonald's is everywhere, this could be such a big case study for all the other countries. And I think that those kind of solutions are a result of World Cleanup Day, and they will be a motivator for everyone who should also join this great, uh, this great movement. I'm confident. Great. Robert in the Netherlands, big virtual round of applause for Robert. Thank you very much, Robert. And we're going to move on now from the land of the uh, cogs and the tulips and the windmills. We're going to Kazakhstan. Um, to uh, Sasha Lin, Sasha Lin in Kazakhstan, and the topic of this talk is to save or to destroy. What do you do? Do you save or destroy? So Kazakhstan, it's over to you. And just to unmute your microphone, Kazakhstan, so we can hear you. Hello, everyone. Colum, my name is Sasha Lin. You remember Sashalim. me? I'm sorry I pronounced it wrong, Sasha Lim, but it's, it's good to see you again. Same to you, same to you, my friend. Uh, it's all, always a pleasure to see and be in LDV family. It's a huge family. And uh, to say for destroy, it's a second topic. But the first uh, topic which I, I would like to share with you, it's a success story of Kazakhstan. Let me, allow me to start. Since 2014, I found the national movement, which I call we are the, for the clean country. And really, Kazakhstan is very big and it's a number nine in the world. And still it allows us to have a lot of rubbish in, around our country. And when you have a huge uh, column, it's no more presentation. Uh, it's supposed to be there. Can you share it? Now, I do not have your presentation. I think uh, people oh. share the presentation from their own computers. Uh, no, I, I, I send it over to Haiti in America, and I thought you, they will share it. Yes. Okay, you, I think you, if someone has to share... Uh, by the way, everyone, this is a glimpse behind the scenes of what goes on. And uh, if... Uh, just one sec. Okay, we're working on it. We'll have it in one second. And just to mention as well, um, I'm surprised at how smoothly this has gone. I think it's a testament to all the work that everyone has put in when you have so many people on a Zoom call doing presentations, playing videos. So it, it is there. It is there. There we go. And we'll so, hand back to you, back to Kazakhstan. Back to Kazakhstan. Back to Shasalim. Okay. Uh, success story of Kazakhstan. Second page, please. As I told you, since 2014, I founded the national movement, which I called We Are for the Clean Country. And because of uh, we are number nine in the world by the uh, by the area territory, we still have a lot of rubbish. Uh, and uh, next, please. Next slide, please. So next one. And when you have a huge country, there is a huge issues to save or destroy your country. This is what idea I go. I decide to save. And today, together with my friends, and uh, we held over 50 events during 2014 and 2020. These events brought us uh, more than 200,000 participants, which involved. And next, please. Since April of 2016, we are a member of L Let's Do It World family. And a uh, small history. In 2018, when we participate first time, we have more than 9,000 participants and collected 87 tons of trash. 2019, we gathered 35,000 participants and 300 tons of trash collected. 
by the 2020 pandemic time, we gathered 137,000 people and 6,020 tons trash for recycle, which sent 4,900 tons. Next, please. Two times next. We, we are proud of our local and national heroes of Kazakhstan. And I truly believe that a clean planet beginning from your heart, best actions and ideas from you, uh, sorry, I truly believe that clean planet begin from your home and best actions and ideas from your heart. All that we can do only when we join our sources in a big family like LDV. I'm proud to be a part of this family. This means when we're together, we are stronger. God bless you. Let's do it world and keep it clean and wear the mask and keep the distance. And this is success story, quick success story of Kazakhstan. And uh, second topic, which is uh, biodiversity in the city and around the city. Uh, it's, you can switch off uh, this presentation and prepare the, role, uh, the short clip, please. And I would like to talk about biodiversity. We talk about uh, uh, cigarettes, but it's a big, huge problem. Of course, I agree. But no one of us do, didn't talk about chewing gum. You know, huh? everybody is throwing out the chewing gums, not in a bit on the earth. And what happened next? The birds is coming down and eat this chewing gum, thinking that it's a bread or something like that. The chewing gum, it's uh, going to melt it in, in, in the throat and the birds is dying, you know? And it's a huge problem. And in in place of collecting the trash, we're collecting the dying birds are also on the streets. This is what we need to think about it. Not only um, cigarette butts, but uh, chewing gum should be in the bin, which is later on we'll go for the, for the garbage uh, areas, but not... Uh... Okay, and uh, the last one, this small, small movie, well, it's uh, 59 seconds. Разгружаем все, все начинаем кушать здесь, да, туда-сюда. Сперва уберемся, чтобы чисто было кушать. Ну, разве с ним так просто бывает? Любимое Отличное место убираем. рыбаков. Задели здесь 70 крагачей. В 15 году это уже сколько? Какое место для отдыха. Но это место для отдыха, а не для того, чтобы его гадить. Beautiful video and a beautiful way to end our presentation, Sasal, and that was gorgeous. And uh, Kazakhstan, so beautiful when you see the clean beaches and the water, and uh, I'm sure you're very proud of your country. And That's what see... I'm trying to do, to be proud for long years. Yeah, and I know you were there last year at the conference. You put in so much work and effort, so we appreciate it. And I'm going to ask if anyone has a question for Sasalina for um, Kazakhstan, unmute your microphone now. Very good point about the chewing gum. Thomas is saying in the chat as well. Very good point. And also a second point, uh, which is also a good point, it's uh, fireworks. We a don't, fireworks, okay. Yes, we need, you don't need to use it, especially when the Christmas. It's enough that the municipality is using a big fire show and mm -hmm. the people, when is, they're using a, a small fireworks, they can uh, damage themselves first. And second of all, at nighttime, they spook the birds as well. And birds can die as well. Uh, as well. They can be beat by fireworks or spook. Which Baby, also. you're a firework. Come on. To sorry, sorry, guys. So <laughs> any questions? Finally, for Kazakhstan, five seconds. Four. Three. Make it go up, up. Oh, sorry. No, go for <laughs> That's can, for the can, after party. We're leaking into after party territory. So, any questions? Four, three, two, one. Kazakhstan, Sasselin, thank you so much. 
I Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean, Thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone. Wait, Sean, for Sasaling. Oh, yes, uh, question. Yes. yes, go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, I want to ask Sasaling how far with the chewing gums? Any solution, anything, any, something new about the chewing gums? You spoke about it, but I did not get it well. Uh, from, from last uh, year, I, I, I was chewing gums. I was, uh, Last, from last year, I was working to the schools and university and explained to the uh, school people, pu people that they, do, they don't need to, to throw the chewing gum on the streets. They need to throw it into the bins. And the, this is most important stuff what we can do. It's uh, explain to everyone that chewing gum is supposed to uh, throw it uh, down to the bins, not to the earth. This is only one thing what we can do. It cannot be reproduced but at least it can be thrown to the bin. This only solution I can suggest. And as more people know about it, uh, more effort uh, could be uh, brought from uh, for ecological stuff. Sorry. Great, good question and good answer. Thank you so much, Sasselin. And let's move straight on to our one of our final speakers for today. Okay. We are going to France. Thank you. You're welcome. And we are going to talk, uh, where are we going in France? Opportunities are everywhere, connecting people to succeed in all challenges. Virginie, Virginia in France. Bonjour. Hi, it's everybody. Over. Good to see you again. First, I got a present for you. Can you see this? Oh, like Smithix. Smithix is a very good drink made in, in the south of Ireland. <laughs> So, yes, it's like a, a token of appreciation, you know, like virtual one. Virginia, does that mean that you're drunk right now? Have you been drinking? No, as you can see, it's a mug. So I got my tea in at the moment. Uh, I have my doubts. I have my suspicions. <laughs> <laughs> it's over okay. to you. Then, guys, uh, it's time to share you my presentation. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you for the first time, actually. So... Uh, I want to go directly to the topic. Uh, we went last year in February, we organized our strategic plan of communication, the way we will gather people, and uh, finally we were locked down. We saw all the people from uh, Walk in a Day and all the French people actually, uh, very disappointed of uh, not being able to do something. All the people in Let's Do It uh, movement are doers. So we were uh, asking uh, how we can give them the opportunity to do something from the sofa or from their home uh, for the environment. That's why we decided in uh, 15 days to um, promote a new campaign like a recipe uh, as you can see here, the French word recette, which is a uh, uh, eight recipes as you are at home uh, to do a digital cleanup and uh, to take care of the environment. Because uh, as you may know, a digital uh, uh, use is also connected to carbon footprint. So we, we made this uh, little booklet and uh, we, uh, we did it with experts, uh, another NGO in France. And uh, we use this for a campaign to motivate our members and all the people uh, to be connected to the environment and a way of not doing waste, even if it was a uh, digital waste. Um, from this campaign in March, we uh, also um, we had a new opportunity to talk to new people that we didn't reach. Uh, until now, uh, because we, we can enter in the life of the people, in their inner life, actually, uh, in their daily life, uh, and not only uh, for the people who are uh, interested in what happened in the nature. So that's a new way to a new step to be in touch with people. So that was our first idea to uh, tackle this uh, prob problematic of not going outside. And secondly, we were asking uh, how we can connect people because usually we have drinks outside 
uh, what we call uh, the walk-in update after work so that the people can be in touch together. That's how we mobilize everywhere in France in all the region. And we were not able to do this and to be so funny. So we decided to uh, build funny webinars and Zoom sessions uh, with uh, lots of people and uh, in different topics. And we launched what we call a monthly date uh, with ambassadors around the country. And from that, uh, we went from 20 ambassadors in the country uh, until 150 ambassadors. And now we are all connected and we keep on going on this, uh, this thing. We also decided that we had to be more and more funny. Fun is really one of the um, base, one of the key value in uh, France. Uh, in our uh, program and uh, we decided that we have to be really fun this year uh, so we 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 did it like um, a movie um, movie presentation so that the people can see us we make a movie uh, we a little little one very short one and we also made a very very funny pictures for the kids uh, in order to allow everybody to jump in the program uh, and in our Zoom part, in our Zoom party and uh, webinars, we had people from 17 years old to 70 years old. So that was very nice, actually, because we can uh, have our diversity. Everyone can bring his own uh, competencies and uh, his own will to be here and to commit in this program. And finally, from this first. Uh, idea that we had in March, uh, we finally decided to organize a cyber world cleanup day, which is digital world cleanup day, and world cleanup day at the same time in France uh, at the world cleanup day period, so that the people that cannot go out, because in the companies, for example, it was very hard at the moment uh, to be to be outside and to, clean, to do cleanups. So we had a very good result. We uh, had uh, the same amount of cleanups uh, in the country uh, than the year before. Only uh, 139,000 people, which is half uh, of uh, 2019. But it's normal because we had also discussion with the Ministry of uh, Health to to be sure that the COVID could be it could be okay with the with the crisis of uh, COVID. And uh, what is the main uh, ish, uh, achievement of this year is that uh, we had uh, the mayor Anne Hidalgo, Paris mayor, uh, which is leading actually a very a very big group of uh, mayor of big cities in France. She she made the cleanup during one uh, hour, so that was very very nice to talk with her and to see what we can do in big cities in France. And uh, one of my personal achievements when I co-founded the World Cleanup Day in France uh, was to be on uh, the TV news the day of World Cleanup Day. And I had the opportunity to be live at the TV uh, to give the results uh, the day uh, of World Cleanup Day. So we were very happy. And we had a very big uh, results from the first Cyber World Cleanup Day, Digital World Cleanup Day. And it gave us a new opportunity to develop a new cycle, a new campaign. Uh, and that's how, how we will launch our campaign in France in, for 2021 with a digital uh, cleanup uh, so that we can, uh, we can tackle again the COVID and uh, keep uh, going on. And as uh, Vincenzo said from Italy, here in France, we are for less blah blah and more action. So that's, that's how we do the thing. And, uh, and uh, be smiling and positive. I almost finished calm so that maybe I'm, I'm ready for some question. That was beautiful. And thank you so much for that great presentation. And now we're gonna open it up to the floor if anyone would like to ask a question about that presentation or about the situation in general in France when it comes to um, the world cleanup and let's do it France. So would anyone have a question for Virginia? Unmute your microphone and tell us where you are and your name, please. Can I Don't be asking? Yes. Okay. 
So, Virginie, uh, my name is Andy. I'm from Indonesia. It's interesting for me to hear the digital campaign from uh, the French. I mean, like, it's the specified things that some of countries uh, cannot reach of this site as well. So, from your opinion, uh, how do you can engage the digital uh, garbage through around the world to get a concern on this site also? I, I missed a little part of the question. Uh, so it's about digital cleanup, but uh, how to engage people in this program, you mean? Right, is it? Right, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, first, uh, our main concern uh, last year was the company. Because in the companies, uh, they in France, uh, for example, uh, almost everybody was uh, home working and they cannot uh, be committed in cleanups. So uh, the, f the first uh, option that we see, is that we saw, is that to go to companies and uh, as they were using all their uh, computers and so on, they would be happy to have something to do all together in the company uh, and to be linked in a way by doing this. Uh, secondly, uh, it was also something to uh, make all the people aware and to have um, uh, of the um, all the things that we have uh, in our uh, smartphones and computers, and also uh, all the problem of uh, the material waste, because uh, from the computer, it's not only digital, it's not only data, it's also uh, all the materials and uh, how, how we need the resources, primary materials to, to, to build all these things. Uh, so the, the good advice uh, would be also to go to another uh, part of uh, the population, uh, which are the young people, because uh, they are very connected, very, very, very connected, and they don't have any, any idea of what's happened uh, just, just with their data and everything. So uh, that's how we did it. First, to go to the... To the to the companies and also uh, go to school so that uh, everyone can can talk and maybe uh, find find a, a solution in for the school or for the pupils and for the companies okay okay thank you i think i, I get get them something from your advice but do, do not hesitate to send me any message so that we can share things even if it's french uh, version for the moment okay thank you Virginia. That is great. Antti in Indonesia, thank you for that great question. And to Virginia in France for breaking that down and for that wonderful presentation. Virtual round of applause, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are going on now to our final speaker before we have our after party. And just to remind you, we're broadcasting this on Facebook Live now and on different platforms, but we won't be broadcasting the after party, okay? You know what I'm talking about? It ain't going to be broadcast. What happens at the after party stays at the after party. But our final speaker now, we are going to Mexico, to Mexico, and we're talking to Jose Roberto, but we're starting this with a video clip. So uh, if you'd like to queue up the video clip and then we'll hear the talk right after this.
Yes. The video clip and now, Jose, good to see you again. You're looking great. Over to you. Take it away. You, no pressure, Jose, but you are the final speaker in our success stories. So now with all the pressures on you, all eyes are on you. It's over to you. Okay. Hello, everyone. This was our result report. It's a very pleasure to stay with you. And this 2020 was a year of challenge for humanity. The union, work, and love for life were the key to moving forward. Before to start, I want to dedicate this message to all the leaders, to all the partners, and to all the members of this great family. Thank you. On behalf of the world and all the species that inhabit here, you are the heroes of the planet. And thanks to for your action, we can believe and have faith in a great future that contemplates everyone. I am Roberto Palafox. I represent Let's Do It Mexico, a team of great leaders and agents of change with green projects along, around the year. And the success of this result report took three steps. First one, the alliance of people, institutions, and companies that want to help the world. We're looking, how can we do the things? And also asking our partners to help us find more partners. All have one friend who adds your battles. The companies is the same case. The second point, I was, um, it was in sharing the planning with great leaders and teachers. In our case, it was many countries like Salvador, Argentina, Hungary, Panama, Mozambique, and many more. Because if you generate the same project and development in, in two or more countries, it's more attractive for any commercial allow but the process must be the same. The third point, the, the create, the, for me, this is the most important, create strategy planning, deadline, standards for evaluation activities and results. Why, why my work is good um, compared to, the, to, to what, how many variables do you have? This indica indication help you improve it in each activity. Um, and management time, uh, so, sorry, excuse me, I have a, a, a nine cats and I need, to go. okay. And manage time to obtain the necessary materials for activities. A positive impact for the world is, is measured in the results, actions. But the most important thing is the hearts to people what we are did. This is the strength of this great family. We have the possibility of doing many actions in the public space of every city in the world. We can paint the planet green if we want only in this many friends. For me, <laughs> no. For me, the best, the best challenge um, in, this, in, in this last 2020 is innovate. No, okay, with... no, no. okay. 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 For me, uh, the, the most challenge for me in this 2020 is innovate with environment solution to companies and improve the production process for save the world and change the habits of the world around the use um, and show them how to make the change. If 10% of the humanity joins in a cause, the world change. And we almost reach the goal. The key is to convince ourselves the importance of your action and your team actions. We're going to change the world. And I guarantee that Mexico will join to projects that you want to manage replicating in this country or helping the methodology to generate them. We're strangers. And this is the best family family of all. Thank you for listening. And especially thanks for Haiti management, Alemania and Indonesia management. I share my email through the chat in case someone wants to work with Mexico or want more information about the results or near anything, you know, so let's, let's change the world and let's do it. Thanks. Hey, well done, Jose. Round of applause, everyone, for Jose. That is fantastic, really inspirational speech. Let's hear a round of applause. There we go. There we go. And we're, yes, they're going crazy, Jose. Woo. And I want to ask you something. Did I hear you right? Did you say you have nine cats? Yeah, I have nine cats. I adopted my house with nine cats and, and very many birds. <laughs> Many birds. Wait, you have nine cats and how many birds? In, in my in my house, stay a tree. 
uh, have many 10 the 20 20 birds but Jose, is that not i know we're getting a bit off topic here but is that not dangerous because birds like to kill sorry cats like to kill and eat birds so you have all these cats and all these birds in your one house when you have the cats when he's beginning and he's a baby you give up many 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 foods and maybe only two touch the touch the birds and don't say anything it's it's a good it's, wow so do your cats go up sometimes and touch the birds but don't hurt them yes ma'am please chicken one yeah show us show us one of your nine cats you know the joke is always about old cat ladies <laughs> well they this oh look yeah the name is julia it's very docile don't angry and don't hate the birds <laughs> don't hate the birds. <laughs> so, it's joining to the party does anyone else have a question for Jose about World Cleanup Day or about his 900 cats? <laughs> anyone have a question? Unmute your microphone and tell us where you're from. Someone's got to have a question about the cats, at least. I've got another 500 questions about the cats. Okay. Any questions, anyone, before we go on to the next thing? I just want to say, hi, it's Ingrid here. Uh, I just want to say I love your cats, Jose. Oh. Oh, and your birds, nice. too. <laughs> yeah, that is great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Ingrid. And uh, Jose in Mexico, thank you so much. A big round of applause once again, everyone, for Jose. Thank you. Um, and guys, that is yeah. it. Now, here's what's going to happen, because this is very exciting. There were amazing stories that we heard over the past two hours. And I just want to say well done to everyone, because... I know, you know, trying to stay involved and to pay attention and to keep really focused on what's happening over Zoom, it's not the same as being in person. It's, there's no way it can ever be the same as being in person. But I think, and I think you'll agree that the speakers today with their presentations, with the internet connections, with all the different obstacles did a great job from all over the world. So thanks to all the speakers and a little round of applause, virtual round of applause for them, because it's not easy. And they did a great job. So we appreciate that. And they still managed to get the message across the spirit across and inspire the rest of us. So there are people watching all over the world now on Facebook and social media. Don't go anywhere people on zoom here because we're about to have the after party and it's going to be an after party. We'll have it for maybe half an hour or so a bit shorter than we expected because we ran over time. But for those watching on Facebook, thank you so much for watching the uh, first day of the conference, the let's do it world conference brought to you by let's do it world. Let's do it Germany and let's do it Indonesia. Everybody working together. We'll be back again tomorrow with more great speakers and workshops, which will be streamed on social media too. So until then, we will talk to you tomorrow, those of you watching on Facebook. Yeah. That's Congratulations, where they, it's the first day. That's where they cut the feed on social media. Now, Stamo is going to play something nice on the piano. It is your chance to get a drink, to run and get a cup of tea, to bring something back. You have a few minutes, and then let's just shoot the breeze off to each other. So at the moment, beautiful piano music.
it's always amazing when you see uh, the hidden talents that people have because you're used to working with them in a certain capacity and that's how you see them in that role. And then you see them do a beautiful piano performance like that. And it makes me realize how untalented I am. 